With the holiday season in full swing, we're bringing you a marathon of our favorite holiday home tours on this special episode of Homeworthy. From twinkling lights in New York City to timeless garland displays in Washington, D.C., these tastemakers will surely get you in the festive spirit to celebrate with your closest friends and family. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Shelby. Welcome to my New York City apartment. Come on in. This is Pearl. Hi, I'm Shelby Van Hoy, and I live in the Upper West Side of Manhattan with my husband, our almost one-year-old baby, and our dog, Pearl. <laughs> She's very, very large, but she's so sweet. A lot of people ask us how we live with a dog this size in New York City, and she's surprisingly calm and just lays around a lot, but she does need a lot of walks, so luckily we're very close to the park, and she loves going on walks to the park, um, but she's surprisingly mellow. So I am a content creator, so I create videos and photography for companies in the food and home industry for their marketing. And this all started with um, a blog that I started in 2014, Pretty in the Pines is the name. And I just started it as I was trying to get into dental school. It was a fun hobby on the side and I did not get into dental school. So um, I'm really thankful that didn't work out the way I hoped it would. But now I have a job that fuels my creativity. I got the name Pretty in the Pines from North Carolina where we lived at the time and um, I wanted it to be like kind of nature inspired and it's really the complete opposite of where I live now. The name doesn't quite make sense anymore but I'm keeping, I'm sticking to it because it reminds me of where I came from. This room is our living room, and right now it's flooded with light, which is, um, I'm so appreciative of it because our last apartment had no light in our living room. Um, I, I need you to see the photos before though, because this room was such a bare white room and we've done so much to it. Um, this is a sh antique chandelier that I found, but we found someone to, make it a plug-in light and I feel like this really centers like the whole room. Um, we added ceiling molding which is like <laughs> so I guess extra but it's really I just love it so much. Um, it's we used command strips to add this to the ceiling and I've always been drawn to very like European ornate trim work and now I feel like the living room has a bit of that and I just love it so much. But we added um, molding on the walls. Um, this whole mantle fireplace was not here. Uh, we had this fireplace surround in our previous home, but we moved with it and um, I added some peel and stick brick to kind of give it a faux fireplace look. Um, added some flameless candles down there and this really just made it, it took it from like a apartment, an apartment to a home. And um, it was one of my like DIY projects that I just couldn't get out of my head. So uh, we just went for it. We built this, um, I guess, fireplace insert surround thing. <laughs> and it um, 
yeah, it just feels so much more cozy in here. By the way, we do rent this apartment, so everything that we've done um, is reversible. We can take everything with us. Um, we used a lot of like double-sided double -sided mounting tape to attach trim to the walls. Um, painting, we will have to paint it back to white, but for us, we don't know how long we'll live here. It'll probably be a while, so um, it was important to me to love where I live. So this is peel and stick brick veneer. So it's like a thin, thin layer, I think of, of brick. Um, and it had like sticky uh, peel and stick on the back and I painted it black, but it is like so realistic. If you, I mean, if I wanted, if I had an extra wall to make like a brick wall, that it would, it would work really well for that. Um, and then this is like a MDF board and I used Roman clay to give it like a romantic um, European vibe. So the ceiling, it didn't take as long as you would think. Um, we just had to make the cuts with the molding and the corner pieces, obviously they came separate from the long trim pieces, but it didn't take as long as you would think. Um, Painting the ceiling was kind of another story. I get the idea, but he helps me execute them for sure. Um, but we both were kind of like a team and we, like I was up there sticking molding up on the ceiling. Um, he did paint the ceilings, but it's definitely a team effort. And I'm so thankful that he is also like into this because um, he's helped me with a lot. So we moved to New York from North Carolina. We owned our first house there and we decided, my husband was traveling all the time for his work to New York City and I was finding myself home alone a lot. He was gone every single week and we just, we didn't love all of the traveling happening. So we decided, what if we moved to New York so you'd never have to travel? And we sold our house in North Carolina and we moved to New York City and we have really, really loved it. It was scary because neither of us had lived away from our family. So this is the first time we've lived states away from our family. We've always lived in the same state as our parents and uh, the rest of our family. So it was a little scary, but it was probably the best decision that we ever made as um, a couple and as our own little family unit. <laughs> so this is our TV wall. This is a photo that I took when we traveled to Banff National Park in Canada and I thought it looked kind of Christmassy. So um, surrounding the frame TV is some of, or some of my favorite artists' work. So um, this illustration is from a local friend of mine who is so talented and she drew this horse. Um, her name is Kesia Finley. And um, over here we have a lot of Hannah Winters. This one, this one, and this one are from her. Um, in addition to some of my favorite artists, I found some really good finds at thrift stores. So this map of Manhattan was $5 at a local housing works, which like I love it so much. And this one was also found at housing works, um, but added a little wreath for the holidays. But yeah, this whole space is like our entertainment area. And I really love decorating with ribbon. So anywhere I can put ribbon, the, I love it. So um, added some ribbon on these art frames. I, last year I actually wrapped like multiples with ribbon, but um, I wanted to go for like a little minimal <laughs> approach this year. So just one, but I think it just adds a little festive touch. In the media console though, are baby toys. So we um, keep, the toys of the hour are here. Like he goes, he has like his favorite toys and that's what goes in here. Um, for all the other toys, we have a chest behind our sofa that we keep all of those toys in. So our tree this year, we have a one-year-old large dog who can get any of these um, ornaments. We also have a baby. So, and he's at the age where he's grabbing things. So. Towards the bottom, I added a lot of like felt animals, um, you know, non-breakable ornaments. And it's kind of just a variety of 
things that I've collected over the years, there's not a real theme going on. There's animals and flowers. These flowers are actually wooden. Um, I found them at Trader Joe's and I can just stick them in there. They're wooden flowers that you can use like year after year. Um, and I've actually started collecting houses. So I do have a lot of different house ornaments there's like a, a brownstone ornament, a gingerbread house ornament, all sorts of houses. And these picture frames, I, I have a picture for every year that we were married. I chose one memorable moment and framed it. And then on the back, it has what year it was. Um, and I just added ribbon to the top of the frames. But this was 2019. We um, went to the south of France, which such a great time but yeah 2020 eating thanksgiving alone <laughs> 2020 on the floor cozy though but yeah this this tree is really just a you know collection of ornaments that i've gathered over the years this is the first year that i have been early with christmas shopping i think it's because it's the first year that we have our baby um, and I'm just so excited. I don't know. There's something about having a child around Christmas time. It um, feels nostalgic and has made it the whole season feel more magical. So I never, I never have this many gifts with, or this early. This is like, this is rare. And I also have a friend who is due with a baby next month, and I have bought quite a few things for them. <laughs> so they're wrapped under there as well. So this wall, I wanted it to have some sort of function. It was just an empty white wall. And I found a writing desk on Facebook Marketplace. It was the perfect dimensions. And um, I decided that this would be kind of just like a desk corner. So we added shelves. And we also added this like beadboard textured um, wallpaper and painted it. I don't work here as often as I thought I would. Normally, it's just the dining table but um, occasionally I do sit down and um, work in this corner. I also, when I can find time, I have like a, an easel and I'll paint here, which is really nice. It's like the perfect size for that kind of setup. So we have lots of like paint over here and these drawers are filled with um, all sorts of like craft supplies. So this is like my craft corner. In addition to the location, which I absolutely love, about this apartment. Um, I would say my favorite thing is the natural light. Um, the bedroom gets the most natural light and it's a corner unit. So you can, you'll see that um, the windows are just so beautiful. And with the location, we're very close to the park, but because the apartment is so high up, which is why we get a lot of natural light, we also get really, really cool views of the skyline and um, I would say that's my favorite part. Probably location, views, and natural light. Before we see more of this home, be sure to visit homeworthy.com shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel. So now we will go into our dining area. So this is actually right when you walk in, the door is right there and you um, come into our dining space. So it's kind of a mix of dining and entryway, but this is probably the most used space of the whole apartment. We eat here, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we're here. We also use this kind of like as a workspace and um, use it as a desk and yeah, I love this room because um, it's kind of the center of the whole apartment. So you can see the living room, go into the kitchen right here. Um, I found a lot of pieces of furniture that work well for storage um, over here. So we have this sideboard piece of furniture and I wish I could say that we store like really nice serving wear in there, but we store our shoes in there because I've just, I. For a while, we were, we were just having shoe piles accumulate and this has worked so well. So this is filled with shoes, um, gloves, all sorts of um, accessories that we wear. So um, over here, this mirror that I added, it hides 
a phone. So when we order food or something and um, it comes, we have to answer the phone, but it wasn't the most aesthetically pleasing phone. So um, yeah, and it's super easy to get behind there. So we added some battery operated lights over these um, prints and all of this molding we added, we painted the room in a color called um, Duxbury Gray. So it's a blue grayish color and it completely transforms this room. Uh, we even added um, these wall details and they're on there with command strips so we can remove them. So when we walked into this room for the first, or when we walked into this apartment for the first time, it looked very, very different. Um, everything was white. The walls did not have any like architectural interest at all. It was just um, flat white walls. And we, after some paint and a lot of like removable trim work, we made it feel, I always want to have like an elegant feel while it also maintains a family friendly and kind of like laid back, relaxed feel. Um, so if I can like find ways to mix those two, that's my goal. Um, this rug is the easiest, it's washable. You can put it in the washing machine and it's been a game changer. So, but it also feels very like elegant and timeless. So always looking for ways to incorporate those two um, feelings in my um, home style. So from here, we will go into our kitchen space. And one of the, I guess, quirky things about this apartment is that our washer and dryer, which I so appreciate, um, doesn't, well, it, it's in our kitchen. So the refrigerator doesn't actually fit into the kitchen. Um, and this is our washer and dryer. So we actually made this center room an extension of our kitchen. When we moved in, it was just a white, empty room. And it had a refrigerator. It was like a shorter, wider refrigerator. And um, that refrigerator is now in like another <clears throat> unit, but I found something tall and skinny. And then we added a cabinet with um, a countertop. And this is something we can take with us wherever we go, but it has given us so much more like space to cook and to fold clothes. And it's just made this space so much more functional. We added brackets and shelves and um, have some like baking ingredients stored up there. But yeah, we completely transformed this um, little kitchen extension room and it's um, very, very appreciated. It's a huge passion of mine, DIY projects. I think of a new idea like every day that I want to um, do in here. So that's kind of how I started. Um, I guess that's a huge part of my job as well. It started as a hobby. I started a blog back in 2014 of DIY projects and um, now it's turned into like a part of my job. So I wanted to personalize this room a bit. So I found these little uh, picture frames and added peel and stick magnets to the back of them to make them magnets. And I think they're just like, they're, they make me so happy seeing them every single day. So love um, that little quick project that we did. And I have our menu from our wedding on this side of the refrigerator. So any way to personalize our refrigerator while keeping it like, you know, classic and beautiful, it, that was my goal with this refrigerator and I love it. So we were married in um, Charleston. So it has green beans, um, shrimp and grits, mashed potato, uh, a gourmet mashed potato bar, pimento mac and cheese. Gosh, so good. That was five years ago. And to make this room even more functional, we added a shelf here, which is the perfect dimensions for this wall. And I store napkins and tablecloths down here and uh, dishes, olive oil, seasonings, um, all sorts of little kitchen gadgets and things we reach for often. And um, just another little way that we made this more functional. So every little inch um, that could be used for something kitchen related, we did that. So I added hooks here 
for these colanders and measuring cups. And over here I have a, I found this antique um, sewing machine drawer on Facebook Marketplace. And this is where I store tea and sugar. Um, and it's just a nice way to store things. I love that you can find inspiration everywhere, everywhere. You can just walk out the door right there. Um, you're inspired. The architecture around this neighborhood is just so beautiful. And um, the people, the restaurants, the culture, there's just so much to do all the time. Um, we've made some incredible friendships here that feel like family, so it doesn't feel like lonely ever. I could just go on and on about why I love New York, but um, yeah, we really hope that it'll be a part of our lives for a long, long time. So now we're in our bedroom and this room is gets so much natural light, which is so nice. The windows, it has that corner unit window. And I believe these windows are the original like windows um, from when the building was built because they're very, very thin. They do not regulate the temperature very well, but they're so beautiful. So we wanted this room to feel very multifunctional. So this is kind of like a reading corner. Um, it's so peaceful to just like sit here and look out the window and see the buildings everywhere. And I keep all my magazines that I get in here. So whenever I get a moment, I can sit, relax, and go through this uh, pile of magazines. Um, so we tried to make this bedroom have like a half living, half sleeping situation. So this side of the room definitely has um, a, kind of like a living room feel. So I have a friend who is hosting a Christmas party. She hosts one every Christmas season. And these are my contenders for the, the party. So this is what I wore last year, which like makes this room just sparkle like crazy. But um, I was nine months pregnant when I wore this last year, but I think it might be fun to wear it again this year. So definitely might consider that. But yeah, I was going through my holiday outfits and just seeing what I have for the season. I think it's like an alter ego <laughs> this time of year. I like bring out all the sparkles and I want to wear them every day. Like even today, even today, these comfy pants have sparkles. So I do love sparkles. This side of the bedroom um, is obviously the bed. And um, we recently upgraded our bed to this burgundy linen headboard. Um, and it is just so beautiful, especially this time of year. Um, I wanted to add a lot of color and I think that that is the color that this bedroom is like made to have. Um, we have done so much work on this side of the room. Uh, we added brackets and a wooden shelf to so that we can um, kind of disguise the fact that the wall jets out right here and we made it a photo wall. So we also added some molding um, panels all around the wall there. And um, my favorite part about this room, other than the windows and the, nat the natural light, is that we recently made it a movie room. And um, this projector rotates like to whatever angle you need it. So we added a projector screen up there and it is just so perfect to end the day watching a movie. Recently been watching like holiday movies and um, it just, made this room so much more cozy. So right here we have a, one of my favorite Facebook marketplace finds. I think I found it about two years ago and it was yellow and kind of like dingy, but um, this lady was moving and she had this like in her basement and needed to get rid of it. So I painted it and um, it was the perfect space for this wall, which was so nice because we had this in a in our previous apartment, but it just fit the room so well here. And um, I added like a little Christmas village down there with taxis and um, lights. And it's like my little New York City in the mantle. <laughs> so for Christmas this year, this is actually like way 
toned down compared to what I did last year. Um, I wanted it to feel festive, but not super cluttered. And last year, I think it got to like a cluttery point, but I think I've found like a perfect tappy medium. So um, I, I don't know, I just found little areas on each wall where I could spruce it up a bit, like the bed wall, just a simple wreath. Um, didn't add anything to the top shelf. Last year, I think I had trees like all lining up there, which was really pretty, but I wanted to change it up this year. So just a simple wreath, but I also um, did bring out some holiday bedding. And um, I feel like the bedding itself is like a big holiday decoration. He doesn't play too often in this room. Um, he loves, he loves, he's at an age where he sticks anything in his mouth. So I have to be careful about what he sticks in his mouth, but he likes blocks and building like things and stacking things. So, um, yeah, I think as he gets older, this will be like a tradition that we have where we can like build this city together. But I think at this age, he's just, I think he would just knock it down. <laughs> Now we are in Brooks's room, um, and this is one of my favorite rooms. It's the newest, I guess the most newly decorated room, and it just feels magical and like a, and kind of nostalgic, but I wanted it to feel like a page out of a children's book, and I wanted to bring in a lot of color and vintage items, um, and t I tied in a lot of blues and greens to kind of keep it a calming feel, but I wanted it to feel classic, but fun and magical. So um, over here is the crib. I just added some Christmas flannel sheets. So this closet is from Ikea, but we added doors and then we added this um, trim and we primed and painted it to give it a whole fresh, more elevated look. And it actually houses my clothing because I had to get creative with the storage solutions in here, but um, I think it looks really good and um, seamless in this corner. And over here, we have one of my favorite pieces of furniture. I found this on Cherish, but it actually, the description on the website said that it belonged to a New York City music school, which I thought was really cool. So, um, and it was the perfect dimensions for this wall in his room. So I thought it would be really good here. It's timeless. And if he grows up, I can see this, or <laughs> if he grows up and doesn't like it when he's older, I can see this working well in like a dining room or a living room. It's just so beautiful. Um, there is a lot of wear and tear on it, but it's just my favorite thing in the room. And I can fill it with clothing, with toys, all sorts of things. Um, we attach it to the wall just to make sure that it's safe. I wanted a room that didn't feel like your everyday, like blue, or blue versus pink baby room. So I think this is something that as he gets older, it can grow with him. And um, yeah, I like that it feels, like there are baby aspects to it, obviously, but it also feels definitely like a timeless kid's room. On this wall we have, I added curtain rods to the wall just to add even more clothing um, storage space, but I also think it just kind of looks really cute and I like picking out his outfits. And for as long as he'll let me pick out his outfits, I am really enjoying it. So I love how these curtain rods turned out and I've added a lot of um, thrift store artwork. So this is something that I found at a local thrift store. On this wall, we have a, a book wall and this is actually a plate rack that I found on Etsy. I really enjoyed finding like handmade items on Etsy um, and this was one of them. So it came unfinished and we painted it and now it's a book rack. So, and I've been changing out like the books seasonally and it's just so much fun. And we recently traveled to Vermont and this one is from a children's store that we found in Woodstock, Vermont. So he likes that one as well. And I mentioned the antique artwork, but this is another one that I found that I absolutely love. I felt like the colors just fit in so perfectly with all the blues and the greens. Um, and another Etsy find was this shelf that um, I found and painted and it holds all sorts of things. I found this at an um, antique shop in upstate New York. I'm not 
not sure what it's for. It's definitely not a dog toy. <laughs> this lampshade was another vintage find on Etsy. Um, I just had never seen one quite like it. And I, um, this is like a modern floor lamp, but I removed the lampshade and I just think this one fits so well in here with like all of the unique vintage items. I think these are very common in Europe. Um, when I was looking at like baby toys and everything, I saw that these were kind of popular in countries like Denmark. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of nice way to kind of hide this where you like start the closet. Um, and his baby mobile was here. It had dogs, but I recently repurposed them to be Christmas ornaments on that little tree. So I was too emotionally attached to the baby mobile to get rid of it. So we just made it ornaments. Now I feel like he'll we can bring them out every year and reminisce. This was from an Etsy shop. Um, I just loved the old school feel to it. Um, it felt very, it just felt like, almost like a sporty boys room, but I think it's something that felt really timeless and he'll, he can use it for, and for years to come. To me, home means where you feel safe and just warm and cozy and um, just comforted. And this apartment is very much my comfort space. It is an escape from the loud city. Um, and this apartment feels like home to me. Today, I am so excited that I get to spend the day with Barbara McLaughlin, who is going to give us a tour of her fabulous New York City home, plus show us some of her favorite Upper East Side spots. Allison, hey. Hi, Barbara. I see you're already decorating for the holidays. Oh, I am. Come on in, I'll show you what I've done so far. I can't wait to see. This already looks so festive. Barbara welcomes us into her family's beautiful home where she and her husband Kevin, the co-founder of Jay McLaughlin, raise their two children. She shares her favorite holiday traditions and shows us around the neighborhood for the best sandwiches, shopping, and so much more. Enjoy this episode of Talk of the Town, presented by Jay McLaughlin and Homeworthy. We are so thrilled to be here with you today to get a little tour of your home and to hear all of your tips and tricks for the holidays. Tell us where we are right now in this beautiful townhouse. Right now we are in our main entrance and as you can see, we love color. When we walk in, we've got our bright green walls and although as I say, I love color, this is a kind of a neutral space that we could change up when we need to, especially during the holidays. Okay, so tell us about this holiday tradition that you have so with Christmas cards. We call it, Yes, we call it the card wall. I'm a big Christmas card sender and receiver. And so when they come in, my, my mother used to hang ribbons and she'd have the cards on the ribbons and hang them around the house. But I've taken it a step further. I just hang them right on the door, on the, on the wall. And the first card that comes in always goes right here. And then it just, covers this whole room. So the whole room, when I walk in, it's just my friends. They're all saying, hey, hello, Barb. hey Barb, <laughs> welcome home. <laughs> Last year, I put all of our cards from the very first one, which is this one where we didn't have children and we were just dogs. They're not in order, but this is the first one. And I had these up above them. Um, I put them in order and put them over the um, cooktop in the kitchen, so which was is, fun to see. This is your card from what, like this was 30 our card. years ago? Yeah. <gasps> Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. And they've evolved. They've, and now they've have evolved. People in they them. now have people in them. Yep. And this section, my friend Diana designed these cards for me, and they all looked like this. And then Madeline started making an appearance, but it was always with the dogs. And then I have a, a period of Patricia Van Esch did wonderful sketches. I love that. The animal print carpet leads us upstairs and goes all the way to the fifth floor. Same with this treatment of the walls. Which we're gonna go up in a little bit. Yes. But do you feel that leopard or animal print is a neutral? Totally. Totally. And it hides any kind of stain that, you know. Imaginable. Imaginable. Lots of parties don't Dogs for many years. Line. Dogs, uh, no, nothing. This, these stairs have seen it all. And, and look at that, how good they are. So we're gonna go upstairs, yeah, and we're gonna see your fabulous collection. Yep, work in progress. I love that you call it Santa's Workshop. It is Santa's Workshop. I love this. I love all the preparations as much as I love the holiday itself. 
This is a stunning room. It's such a pretty room, it's such a pretty room. Is this where you spend most of your time? Yes. To be honest, we actually always talk about how we spend a lot of time in the kitchen, but we lately we've been making an effort. We come up here and this is my chair, this is Kevin's, and we'll come and sit at the end of the day. We'll put on our George Winston music and it's and have a drink and it's a calming kind of segue into the evening. Well, it's such a cozy room. But it's even, cozy, yes. Even though the ceilings are high, it's so warm. How mm -hmm. have you accomplished that feeling? Just mixing our art and all the different patterns and the, and the color. And the tree, of course. Talk to me a little bit, Barbara, about how you have mixed um, artwork and prints and patterns. How do you do that? Just by combining things that we like, not in a thought out, methodical way. You Kevin think? is the finder and I'm the arranger. Oh, I love That's that. That's our ar agreement. He's the, the hunter gatherer. Look at all of these unbelievable ornaments. Tell me about this collection. Uh, it has just been since I was going on since I was a child. I mean, some of these, like I had these when I was a little girl, and I'm not a little girl anymore, so these are old. <laughs> but these ornaments, they have patina. Uh, they have a lot of patina. This is a more recent acquisition. It's a little glass of rosé or something? Yes, it is. <laughs> so just like the decor of the room, nothing on the tree has to match. Oh no, nothing. Nothing. And every one of them, I mean, I'm always on the lookout for ornaments, so they are just so much fun and I love to unpack them every year. So you continue to collect? Continue, all the time. The vintage the, Santa. The six-year-old Santa, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> Tell us about this fabulous area over here. Well, that is the, the Jones Wood Garden and we are so lucky to live in a, in a, a common garden. We share with with um, 12 neighbors. There's six houses on this side and six houses on 66th Street. And in the, in the middle is a common garden. So even though we're in the middle of Manhattan, Right, this York is an City. oasis and it's only accessible through the, uh, one of our houses. So you really know all your neighbors? Yes, we do. And I am imagining in the warm months, these doors are flung are open. Are open and people are outside. We, you know, can entertain out, out there, which, ever, you know, people do from time to time. And it's, it's very nice. It's very peaceful. Barbara, obviously you love the holidays. That's quite love the holidays, yeah. clear. <laughs> what do the holidays mean to you? They really, I love all the crazy hustle and bustle. I love all the preparations. I love all of that. But the real, what I really love is that it's a, is a time to um, spend time with family and friends and really savor that. And decorate the tree together. Well, and decorate, yes, we could do that in many ways, but it's really, you know, I, it's just a time to see everybody, celebrate them. and. Get, you know, get together, to gather. To gather. To gather, it's really, that's what it is. I gather that. with family and friends. So how often do you uh, have a fire here? Do you sit here with the fire we or? We all sit here, yeah, we do, we have a lot of wood, so we gotta work through, we gotta work through it. But if we're feeling lazy, we light the hearth, we light our hearth candle. Wait, so what is a hearth candle? The hearth candle, well, I have a couple holiday scents, but one of them is this one, a nest candle, and if you take a whiff, it smells like oh my a gosh. fire. I know. It's Who needs a real fire when right, you have it? Right, exactly. And all you do is blow it out and you don't have to worry about it. Anything. Oh my gosh. There's no shortage of decorations in here aside from the tree. How have you done your mantle? Every year I do something different and this year I love collecting trees of all sorts. So these are a variety of trees that I've had for years. This is the other, the, the silver version of the ones downstairs. The gold have yet to be placed and who knows where they'll be this year. So I just added all of them in and one of this is one of, I think Madeline made this so we've got so you do mix in the homemade oh yeah totally my other secret decorating tip is drugstore garland I I have tried using real garland and that you know gets dry and then of course I worry about the fire and everything and cut them up and then I store them in bags That's and so put them fun. out of here so you'll see that in my hurricane lamps at the base of the hurricane lamps and then just filled in around here too it's like a bit of whimsy yeah and it but it also with looks like a little like a little greenery it's, it looks greenery and festive like greenery and festive all right so okay. from the living room we yeah, are heading into, into the, library. the library yes to so see the dried out the dried alliums that i learned about in christopher spitz miller's book these were all out in the garden and when they finished blooming i clipped them and put them in these vases to dry them and ultimately he suggested spray painting them, which I did last year, and I, you can see some in the other room because I liked them so much I never took them down. So I'm going to ultimately spray paint them, but I 
kind of like them the way they are. So this is your library. Tell us what you have done with the space. So I am noticing the, the painted floor. Yes, the, this is a this is a painted floor and the wall. I mean, everything is actually everything is painted in here. And the ceiling is wallpaper though. The ceiling is not paint. Oh my gosh! Really but you have not forgotten the ceiling. Oh no, not forgotten the ceiling. Is that another tip? Don't forget the ceiling. Yes, that is a tip. And I, it's a tip now. That's a tip now. I, yeah, exactly. I was just thinking I, I, a friend had done it and I copied it. So. <laughs> no, I mean, I, they call it what? The fifth wall to have the, the that's ceiling. That's very true. And it, it and, the, and the sparkling. I love anything with a little bit of a sparkle onto it. So it's a, it's a gold wallpaper. Your Christmas traditions continue downstairs, right? Yep. Time You're, to talk about food. Okay, so where are we going? Dining room. And you're going to take the, the elevator. Look at this. Do you ride this often? Sometimes, but mostly it's laundry and luggage. Is oh. there a light in there? Yeah, there's a light in there, and then there's a phone. Oh, can you get this? <laughs> and it works. It's the it's the kind where like kids now I'm not sure would know how to use the phone like where it's the it's a rotary phone. A rotary. I'll call you if I get stuck. See you down there. Bye, Barbara. Bye. I beat you. Oh, the slow moving elevator. And we're in your wonderful dining room. Set for, set for Christmas. Tell us how you've set this table. Well, I always use this Mary Meckle fabric and, I, and the spode. It's all, for me, the holidays are always about this uh, spode china that I got from my mother and I've been collecting it ever since. So, where do you find all of this china? From everywhere? From everywhere. She gives it to me for Christmas time, and I also am on the lookout. Um, the, you know, wine glasses, and you'll see in the kitchen, I have a lot of different things. So it's not just so, the plates, it no, is? No, it's, it's... Oh my gosh. And, and then these is... candlesticks I found recently, um, a couple of years ago. And these uh, candles that my brother-in-law, Jay, gave to me. Set the scene for me on the holidays. What is it, what is it like in here? Well, it's usually the family and then we'll go to Florida after the holidays but we like to spend Christmas by ourselves what we call the inner family and having our traditional holiday food which is the Swedish meatballs that come from um, Minnesota special recipe A friend brings them to me and um, and rice pudding and those are your two things which we're two things talk we always about. have we have other things but those are two things that are your specialties specialties and no holiday is complete at the McLaughlin house without them and the decorations exactly. continue. You have no shortage, so yes. Yeah, so I'm always filling in little things. Um, you know, no surface is unadorned. So our architect Doug Larson knows that I have a lot of stuff, and he made all of these closets for me. And then the best is over here in the corner. Oh my god! It's gosh. not exactly ready for its close-up because the other thing that the I've been working from home a little bit more these days, and so this has become a bit of an office situation too. So the dining room table was my office for many months. So it's but dishes and jam and... That's your famous jam. So I've got the store of storing the jam there. Another holiday tradition that we can never... Those are so As good. soon as these appear in the paper stores, I start stocking up. That's your guilty, guilty pleasure. pleasure. Well, that and the uh, peppermint haagen also stocking up. Like no, but it's a great kitchen. I mean, no, it's a great, I love it. But it also is, it does a different kitchen for the neighbors. So we're in your kitchen, Barbara. Is this where you spend most of your time? Right here. This is it. What are the, the phrase is the heart of the home? This is the heart of the home. Totally. And we've got the, the back doors open and, you know, can step out. Okay, so here we are. We have two so here we are. We, famous holiday traditions. Yes, the rice pudding, my mother's recipe. Everyone in my family makes it. <laughs> and this is the famous and my original. Mother, yes, I think she made cards for all of us. And it's on a little... Uh, on a loon, on a Minnesota loon. Which is where you're from. Which is where I'm from, so. So what makes this so special? Well, I feel like we need to try it's it. It's so good. First, I have to put the nutmeg on on the top. It's either nutmeg or cinnamon. I prefer the nutmeg. Oh my gosh. It's just a little dressing and we eat it with the meal. You eat it with dinner? It's not a... It's, it's not, not a dessert. <gasps> no, 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 no. We have many other things for dessert. <laughs> this goes right alongside Christmas and Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. It is good. Well, I think we need to try it. I think we do. <gasps> 
What's on your Christmas wish list? Well, spot serving. serving. Yes, spot serving piece. Kevin, are you listening? <laughs> oh my gosh. I've done it again. Yeah, a success. <laughs> so good. It's foolproof? Mm-hmm. These are also a specialty. What's the, the story? Well, the story is Inge Bretzen's um, Nordic market, Scandinavian market in Minneapolis, sells all manner of, of um, Scandinavian delicacies. Lutefisk, which I also enjoy, but don't serve because nobody else seems to enjoy it. <laughs> um, but Swedish meatballs, Swedish sausage, lefse. But the Swedish meatball mix is uh, their special recipe, and we can only buy it there and they don't ship it. So, I so have, how do you get it? Well, in the beginning, I had a, my sister would come when we spent the holidays out in Long Island. She would carry it in her luggage and my dear, dearest friend Melinda would um, come with it every year she visits. So you're And she me. packages up, puts it in her luggage and transports it. So every year for like every year. 30 some years, you've never missed a year. We never miss a year, nope. Well, this is a really devoted friend. It's a devoted friend, yes. Swedish meatball carrier. So the holidays are not the same without these meatballs? No. And, and I've got a freezer full of them downstairs now. Even your kitchen is decorated. Exactly. This is my kitchen mantle. And um, every season I change that out. Last year we used cards, starting with our very first card when we only had dogs. So there were two dogs in the picture and I ran them all the way down. I've run out of room so I couldn't do it this year. They've been replaced by reindeer. So they've been replaced by reindeer and some trees that I had. Do you decorate this little stove mantle every season? Every season changes, yeah. So where are we going now, Barbara? Now I'm starving, so we're gonna go get a, eat, eat here now, get a sandwich. Okay, so tell us about this famous diner where we're going. It's a cozy neighborhood spot where they, they know our favorite uh, lunch spots. The whole family goes here. Kevin picks up his coffee and breakfast in the morning. I come here and get sandwiches. Hugh and his friends come for breakfast on when he has when he has friends in from the uh, coming home for the weekend. And, and no they get frills. up later and no frills. You know, they get up too late for me to serve. And my sister was just visiting. We all went there. Oh my gosh, they know we you visit. all by they name. All, they know the it's the family, it's the family diner. What do you love most about this neighborhood, Barbara? The accessibility. Every it's close to the park. It's it's got all of the. Um, it's got great shops. We've got the new place here, Bellamy, on the corner. Wonderful coffee. William Wayne for shop for shopping. Great for the well, great for holiday. Yeah. Great for holiday shopping. But you know what's so special about your home is that you walk outside and you know that you're yep. in New York City, but when you're in your home, you could be in the English countryside. Yep, it's quiet and yep, and then you step out and here it all is. But when you're there, it's a quiet respite that just feels like a cozy family home. Yep. Is this another favorite this local is haunt? definitely another favorite. We love Donahue's, all of us. What's the favorite thing on the menu? Burgers. Okay, lunchtime. Hey, Veronica, how are you? My usual, the turkey sandwich. With bacon. With bacon, avocado, butter, butter. on the bread. Okay. Fried toast and no, you know what? Thank what you is so the, much. you know what? Mayo. Uh, no mayo. No mayo, anywhere near it. That was fast. And they're fast. They probably saw me walking down the street and started <laughs> to make it. I don't order anything else, so it, it's a pretty safe bet. Okay, so Barbara, you are the president for the Fund for Park Avenue. Yes, I am, yes. And one of your many responsibilities includes making sure there are over a hundred Christmas trees lining Park Avenue for the holiday season. Right, right. These trees, though, they are um, memorial trees. They were lit first in 1945 by a group of Park Avenue families who wanted to honor their um, memories of the loved ones who they lost in World War II. And now today, I manage and fundraise for over a hundred trees, as you said and they honor all that have died in our nation's wars. So tell us about where these trees come from. These fir trees come from Canada and are, and are put up by our crew of landscapers. And right now the electricians are working on putting up, turning all the lights. All of the lights will pop up when? December 4th. There's a lighting ceremony that takes place out the, outside the Brick Presbyterian Church. And there's carols and there's taps and it's a wonderful family gathering. I've been, it's one of the happiest days of the year. It really is, it really is. And it's just such an iconic uh, sight to see. You know that the holidays are here when the Park Avenue trees exactly. have been Exactly, it's true. It's a wonderful, meaningful tradition and it all happens because of the generosity of our neighbors. Thousands of people come. It's really, it has to be seen to be believed.
Hi, we're going to 93rd and Madison, please. See you at the store. holiday shopping. I feel like we're still in your home, but we're not, even though we're in this cozy corner. We're at the Madison Avenue J. McLaughlin store, um, but there's a reason why it feels so similar. Well, this was recently renovated, and it was renovated by Doug Larson, who was the architect of all the J. McLaughlin stores, as well as on all of our personal projects. So you are a dynamic duo. We are a dynamic trio, Doug, <laughs> Kevin, and myself. And the other, another cozy similarity is our, the secret garden in the back. Well, one thing that one thing that is fun is I'm, I get a lot of um, text by with, from friends saying, "Look where I am! Look what I found!" They they are so surprised to find Jane McLaughlin. And just last week, a high school friend of mine sent me a picture of herself with in the dressing room of the Hinsdale store with her dog. Where in? I don't even know where that is. It's outside outside of Chicago. And her, it's a favorite of her dogs because Jay McLaughlin's very dog friendly and there are often biscuits behind the various uh, counters. So the dog led <laughs> the her dogs into knows the store. know where to go. And I think that's what's so special about the store mm -hmm. is that they're in places where there might not be other opportunities right. to find a fabulous outfit. And they know and the and the people that work in the stores, they know everybody and they make everyone, including the four legged customers, feel very welcome. Well every year I collect the tartan J. McLaughlin pants, and I have quite a good collection. This year I've gone with, the, this is the newest edition. I love this color So I'm you. drawn, to, I'm drawn to it. So I, and sp anything sparkly. Look how great this is. Perfect. Again, glittery. Glittery, a pop of like. A pop of color. Metallic. Just what you need for the holidays. And oh, these, these are, are fun, fun because they've got the yellow. But these are kind of retro. Yep, exactly. Comfy and bright. I think you should try it on. Well, I think okay, wait. I'll try yeah, this one on. Yeah. I think the black. I goes. think we should try these on. Okay. How do we look? My head feels warmer already. Mine too. We're ready to go outside. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's just wear these around the store now. I'm gonna keep it on. I'm gonna keep it on. But these gloves would make an excellent gift. Well, and who doesn't like a cashmere sweater? This is a collaboration with Stubbs and Wooten. Oh, I love that. Again, who doesn't need holiday socks? It's like the tartan pants. You get a new pair every year, you're gonna add to the holiday sock. That's a stocking stuffer. No, pun, no pun intended. Huh? Holiday shopping is easy here. In the com it's like in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> you're getting really good at this. <laughs> Another piece of my uniform are the, uh, are the Arlette turtlenecks. I love them. And I like to, just as I collect the tartan pants, I like to get a new color. And this is what you're wearing the, today. What I'm wearing today, the stripes. But I also have my eye on the purple and turquoise new colors this year. Well, I think this is a really festive sweater for a man. Definitely. Nice cashmere, very holiday cheerful, theme. Cheerful, cheerful color. color. And look what's beneath it, the sparkly Arlette. Now what, now this is your favorite turtleneck? This is my favorite turtleneck, this is my favorite turtleneck by day, and here's my favorite turtleneck by night. Sparkle and tartan, and I'm ready to go. You need nothing else for the holidays. Nope, ready for the party. All right, love the gift bar, but Christmas shopping is not complete without a stop at the corner bookstore. This is the Brick Church's uh, annual tree lighting ceremony, and in a few short moments, there'll be carols and we'll hear taps to remind everybody about the history of the trees, and the first tree will be lit. This is a night of families, families gathering. The streets are blocked from 86 to 96, People are in the street and with their families and friends, and they've come every year together. I'm here with my husband, Kevin, my children, Madeline and Hugh. Hey, hi, Homeworthy. Welcome to my place in New York City. I'm Hillary, come on in. I'm Hillary Wallace, and you're on the Upper West Side, and I am sitting next to the fabulous Finnegan Elton Wallace. He got his name, my son James named him Finn from the movie Sharknado, and my daughter named him Elton 
because she got to pick his name as well. And that's how he got his name. And he is our everything. I am an interior designer and I moved to New York 20 plus years ago and I moved out here to find my passion of interior design. And I started working at Ralph Lauren and we started the interior design department and it was fabulous. Um, I worked there for seven years and then after working there, I left and started my own design firm. So this is a townhouse. It was built in 1895. There are seven floors, which is great, but it keeps you in shape. And it's, um, it's a really little, it's thin. It's, it's only 19 wide, which is great, but it's narrow, but it's nice, but it gets a lot of light. Um, it's more of a contemporary inside, but from the outside, it's traditional. But that's what's great about it. It's got a really great yin yang, if you know what I mean by that, because the back is glass, which is different than a lot of um, townhouses. So for most townhouses, you walk in and the stairwell's right when you walk in, so it's dark. For this one, the stairwell's in the back and it's open. And that's why it gets great light. And that's what I really love about that. So what we did for this townhouse is we made it more traditional with the contemporary twist. So if you notice, we'll walk through it a little bit later, we made it more of a loft-like in here. And that's what's really cool about this place, and that's what I really like about it. So when you walk in, it's like this element of surprise versus other townhouses, and that's what I really like about it. And we'll, we'll walk through it a little bit later, and I'll show you guys. Before I take you into my house, I wanna tell you about my stoop, which is super important, because it leads you into the house, and it's the first thing you see. And you can see I have it decorated, and I always have something important here. So right now you can tell I'm talk it's about the holidays. And look how beautiful this is. You walk up and you have the nutcrackers greeting you. And at five o'clock, everything lights up. And I'm telling you, you can see this place from the moon. I have so many lights. As you see, if you look all the way up, there's stars and we have the wreaths that light up. And it's just, it's brilliantly beautiful. You really need to check it out when it lights up. So we take you down over here and you come down here and all of these light up, the trees light up, these light up, and look how pretty these are, how dainty these little stars are. And then you come down here and still everything lights up. Oh, and look who we have, our little elf, Will Ferro, woo! And he's gonna be getting a friend in the next couple days. You guys will have to come check it out. I love decorating for the holidays because it makes everyone really happy and it's super cheerful and well, I always have to be creative, and I love the design of it, and I love making everyone happy. I kind of feel like I live on, I have to say, um, I feel like I live on Sesame Street. I know all my neighbors, it brings people together, and it brings a lot of joy, and I think it's really important. And everyone gets to know everybody, people sit on the stoop, and we talk about it, and it just is a great way to bring people together, and it, it's awesome. That's why I like to do it. So we are in my parlor, which I just love to say, it just feels so grand and I feel like I'm in the turn of the century, which just really makes me so happy. Um, I love this room. We have no TV in here and this is really the soul of the house. Well, actually this whole floor, but this room generates for many purposes. This chair actually is my favorite. I'm gonna sit in it. So this room, this chair generates for sitting in this room for sitting, talking to this people, or I can come here and talk to these people or even in the kitchen, but it's even this part. Now we are in the entry if you wanna put your shoes on and saying goodbye to people. So I love this chair. I got this in New Orleans and I just think it's the coolest chair because it's comfortable for everyone. So I call this the multi-purpose chair. <laughs> so you can do a lot in this chair and my kids love this chair. So this is like my number one chair right here. And this is beautiful Fortuny and it takes a beating. And look at this Fortuny, I mean, look how fabulous. I mean, you can't beat this chair, right? So I love this chair. So we're gonna put it back in place. Oh, and let's talk about the detail on this pillow. Look at this. I got this trim when I was hiking in Nepal. Look at this. And I had, I've had this trim probably for 30 years and I was waiting for the perfect place to put it. So I put this on here. I'm really into detail on pillows. 
and then I got this beautiful trim. And look at this. This is from Samuel and Sons. And then this is Fortuny. For me, it's all about detail. Look, I mean, you could tell a whole story on this pillow. So then I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna karate chop it, put it back. So now let's get to my beautiful sofa. This sofa, this is the trim I was talking about from Brunswick and Fees. They stopped making it and I totally freaked out, but then they made it for me because I needed that detail. This is a George Smith sofa, which I love. Look at this, you just sit on this, woo! And you're in heaven. You just sit here and hang out. And then I got my beautiful pillows that I had made. Again, attention to detail, double trim, look at this. This is from um, Chims and Tassels. This, again, double-sided, you gotta do it. If you're gonna do it, do it right. This is LA, we're kind of bi-coastal. Gotta bring a little LA in, a little yin yang. You never wanna make anything too heavy. Okay, now let's go over here. My fireplace, which I love. These are from Chesney, how to put these in. Again, you need a fireplace to really bring it all in. We spent a lot of time. Obviously, you could tell it's the holiday season. We just wanted to bring a little li life in. So, I, you know, you need pomegranates. You know what pomegranates mean? Love. This one piece, we went to the Gramercy Park Hotel. Yes, I know. It got liquidated. And I freaked out. And we went down and waited in line. And this, to me, is like the golden ticket. This is from the Gramercy Park Hotel, seriously. So talk about having a piece of history. I wanted to cry, seriously. This is from there. Look at this thing. And I got this. I had no idea where I was gonna put it. And this is what I love about interior design. I got this and I just wanna cry. And we put this here and it just fit. And then of course we designed this little clover ottoman, which you need. And then I got these beautiful chairs in New Orleans. Of course, I had to make them white just to, you know, make it easy on everybody. But I love these chairs. They're comfortable. And then again, my table. <laughs> All right. So this is the parlor. But we have to talk about the most important part of the parlor. Are you guys ready? All right. Let's go. Everyone say hi to Finn. Oh. But let's talk about this before we get there. Of course, I have an antique um, bench that I love. I got this upstate New York, which I love, and then I upholstered it in a Nancy Corzine fabric. Here again, I got this at a flea market, and then it was this ugly yellow. And, all right, let's talk about this. See this? It's great, right? Well, I'm gonna sit in this. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I was in Fiji, and I sat in this, and I fell backwards and everything beside, behind me fell. And my husband says to the owner, oh God, I hope that wasn't my kids. Well, it was me. So here it is. I bought the chair and here it is. And I'm proud of it. I got this um, in New Orleans on Magazine Street, which was, I love this mirror. It, I saw this mirror and I just went crazy. I had to get it. And of course, wherever I move, Buddha comes. I love Buddha. Buddha is very important. So let's walk over here my beautiful portier curtains that close. I did this because I wanted to be able to have an intimate moment in the parlor, which you need. Hi. And what's really great about these, these are John Celadino, which I love. Then I wanted layers because like I said, layers are really important. So we put a beautiful um, trim on it. These I think are from Oh, Samuel and Son. And then of course I needed to bring back in some Fortuny fabric, which I love. Look at this, can you stand it? And again, we got a double layer on each side. Detail, detail, details. To me, that is so important and a lot of people forget about that. I drive my clients crazy with this. So we'll put that back. Um, love, 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 so important because when you wanna have an intimate moment or you're having a dinner party, you wanna close it off from the kitchen, that's really, really important. Before we see Hillary's Kitchen, remember to check out homeworthy.com slash shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel.
Then we walk into the kitchen. I want you to meet Sheila the sheep. Sheila the sheep, I have known since I've been three years old. My mother gave this to me as a present, just saying. So if Sheila could talk about all the parties we've had at my house when I grew up and now has come to my house, Sheila would be very scared. So this is Sheila the sheep. I'm very proud to introduce Sheila. So that's Sheila the sheep, don't ask. I'm just saying. So now we're walking into the kitchen. And this is really also the heart of the soul because this is more loft-like, which I really like. Like I said, it's an extension of the house. We spent a lot of time in here. And what I love about it, you can be in the parlor and we can have conversations or we can close it off by the uh, Fortuny curtains, Portia curtains. Um, oh, I'll show you my stools. I love. These are uh, John Roselli stools, which I love. And they have like a French... Um, influence, which I really love how beautiful and they're sturdy. And I love it because we spend a lot of time eating here, doing homework and just hanging out. And I just love the energy of them. And again, this is more contemporary and this brings in more of an old charm feeling, which I really love. Again, that yin yang. And I love it because this again is more of a contemporary kitchen. And I like that feeling because we really have a lot of people over a lot. We entertain a lot. And I like I like entertaining. So I like having people in here and I like that these are sturdy. Like I said, I want a house that people can live in. I don't want to be cleaning up and getting worried about anything. So I want something that's livable and I love it. And this also extends and opens up so you can put all of this together. So if you're having like a massive party. So for me, I want people to just be able to come in and throw things down and not feel that things are too fragile. Like for me, again, contemporary, not contemporary. These are from Italy, and I like the idea, the yin yang. I like that these are a little bit more old school. Again, these are from Waterworks. I like that these are not contemporary, and I like the idea of that. Um, again, not contemporary, contemporary. Again, I love traveling, as you could tell. And when we put these shelves in, I got a little pushback from the girls in my office. And they said, Hillary, it looks like you're trying to sell your stuff. I said, no, I want to look at it. I want people to grab it. And I love it. You know, these roosters are an invitation, I think, to, to welcome people, if I remember what it means in Italy. And I just love these. I love, I got these in Italy. I got these in Morocco. And I know you can buy everything here now, but I don't care because I brought them back and it makes me happy. Um, we brought these back from Italy. I know you can buy them down the block now, but I don't care. I love that this means half full. I brought these back from Seattle. And I know this is ridiculous, but I love this. My son bought this for me. I like it. I mean, things like this, I think is hysterical. I mean, this is really me. I'm not a good cook. I have a great kitchen. It's really my husband who cooks. I'll admit it. Um, and I like fun things. I want things to be real. Like, Okay, this probably isn't, the, like, live with a passion. It, it's good, it's good to have this. It's probably, you know, not the coolest thing to have up there, but I like it. And we got these in Amsterdam. So I love all this. Um, and it's important to have things that you love when you walk in your house and know that this is your home instead of hiding everything. I feel like a lot of people go in their house and hide things and it should be perfect and not show who you are. But for me, this is who I am and this is my home. And I love flowers. And that's another thing that's really, really important. As you can tell, this is a holiday season. And I celebrate everything. I just love celebrating life. I like celebrating things. And especially what's going on in the world, I just think that you need to uplift with everything, especially if you can celebrate anything. So right now, it's the holiday season, as you can tell, my house. And I got some pretty amarellas right here. And I just like things. And I like color. So as you can tell, my house, the color palette is more creams and a little bit mellow. And I do that because I like changing it with flowers. And because we live in New York, there's a lot of energy outside. So I like the color palette a little bit more neutral because I like bringing it in, like I said, with flowers or if I find something when I'm traveling and bringing it in that way. So this is what I'm talking about when you find something. You guys ready for this? I'm gonna bring you into the next room, which is the dining room now. And like I said, I, you never know when you're gonna find something. And I told you when I went to Gramercy Park Hotel, when I waited in line and I found something, 
I found two chairs and I bought them and I said, where, where the hell am I going to put these things? Well, come on, look at these. I found these two chairs and I had a fight to hold these two chairs. There was like 30 of them and this one woman was trying to buy all of them. And I was seriously had to like throw my body over these to get these, seriously. And I got two of them because she was trying to buy all of them to resell them. And so I got two of them. Yay! <laughs> Sorry. So I got these. I feel so happy. This is a piece of history, people. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these. I mean, look. They didn't really go with my house, but I don't really care. Look at the, look at the detail. Gramercy Park Hotel. Please stop. I mean, look at these. Oh. So anyway, I'm very psyched. I got these here. I was really, oh, sorry, really super psyched. I bought them and I had other chairs here before that were very subtle. I got the other chairs that were here were like cream and very mellow. They're down in the basement with all my other stuff. I just keep putting everything in the basement. It's okay. We're not going to the basement. So anyway, I got them. I put them here. I walk by them and I'm like, yay! Sorry, just so psyched. Anyway, very proud of those chairs. We spent many years trying to find a townhouse. And it took a long time because we were very particular what we wanted. We didn't want something dark. We didn't want something too big. We didn't want something too small. And it was a very long process. And when we found this place, it just felt right. It had a lot of light. It didn't feel too big and it didn't feel too small. And we wanted something kind of loft-like because we were downtown dwellers. And when we saw this, it, it just had that right feeling. So when we walked in, this, we, we knew. Now we're in the dining room. As you can tell, we're so holiday season. This is an epic piece. This is a John Hardy piece from Ralph Lauren. I got it when I worked there. Let me tell you something. I don't think there's like any left. I think when John Hardy made it, they only made like 25 pieces and I have one and I feel very excited about that. And again, this doesn't really necessarily go in my house, right? But it works because you don't buy things to make it work in your house. You just make it work. And to me, that is the key to interior design. You just make it work. You find something you love and you buy it and you make it work. And that is the key to good interior design. So I have this, you know, barn table in this house that's a contemporary house working with, you know, old country charm. And it works, right? I mean, I think it works. So. It's from Ralph Lauren, it's a John Hardy piece, which I love, and I'm gonna tell you a funny story. But then I, I put it with, um, these are formation chairs with my favorite, as you can tell, it's really old, Mallory Ralph Lauren fabric, which I love. I mean, look how old this is, but oh, isn't this beautiful? And it's worn, which I love. I was thinking about redoing it, but I can't because I just love it. And what's funny about this table, we've had a couple incidents where people forget that it's clear and somebody will be like kicking somebody under the table not to say something and they forget it's clear. And we've had funny incidents like that, which I gotta say, it's been very funny. So we've had so many wonderful events here. We love entertaining and this is a great table. And again, I'll walk you over here. This is our little bar area. This is another antique piece we found upstate. Like I said, I don't like to hide things. I like all my little tchotchkes. My son was into making these cool little bottles. Like I said, I don't like to hide things. And I thought these were cool. To me, this is art. Um, again, this is from Chesney, which I love. I love peacocks. I like having a little place up here to, if I want to work. This is my little workstation. This is from um, George Smith. And it's a little secretary I got in uh, New Orleans. And I love it because it's like my little, I open up my balcony, I'll open it up. It's kind of yucky out, but it's okay. But I do love this. This is like, I feel like I'm in like another world. And listen to this. Well, not that, listen. How quiet, isn't that beautiful? It's like a whole nother world. It's a whole new world. And with my beautiful curtains, look at that, from Chesney. No, I mean from Chelsea Textiles. Look at that. I mean, look, when you sit here, it's like there's nothing better. 
Oh, gorgeous, right? So for me, I like to have my moment here, and this was for my 50th birthday. They put a Barbie doll on my cake, and I just, it cracks me up. Again, you gotta have moments that make you happy. So I keep that there with my Wonder Woman. So again, you gotta do things that make you happy, and that makes me happy. We put a lot of love into this house. Um, there's nothing, and I haven't put anything in this house that doesn't mean something. And one thing that I do is I make sure that it's comfortable, that you know, you can, it's beautiful, but it's comfortable. You can put your feet up, that my kid's stuff is around, that you can talk about things, that it's warm, that it's eclectic, that it's old school charm. Um, that's what I love about my house. Now that I've shown you the parlor floor, I'll take you down to the Malibu room and the backyard in a few minutes, but first I'm gonna take you up to my Sex in the City room. Hmm, let's go. This carpet I had done at Stark because I really thought it was cool that it was kind of worn out and it kind of blends in, but I like the energy. And then I did the landing a little bit different to kind of mix it up. Again, these um, curtains are from Chelsea, Chelsea Textiles. Again, I like the yin and the yang of the modern. And then check these out. These are really cool, these wood slabs from this artist, Nicole Gogolak, and I just really love the energy of these. I think they're really cool and they really kind of pop here. All right, come on up. All right, don't be scared. This is the Wallace Adventure Wall. And this is all the crazy stuff that we've done over the years. We don't have time to look at all this. You'll have to come on over and we can talk about it when you come over. But it's a big wall. All right, let's go. All right, you guys ready? All right. All right, this is my woman right here. It's Wonder Woman and it's from the greatest artist I know, Molly Hickson, right here. Take a look. I saw this and I almost lost my mind. Now, she seriously is my hero since I've been a little girl. and. I saw this and I had to have it. Um, and I bought it and she has been with me since. And I love this piece. And when I walk in, I just know I'm okay. Look at her, Wonder Woman. And the artist is amazing, Molly Hickson. And she also happens to live down the block, which I didn't know. Yeah, we're friends. She's amazing. She's amazing. So, you know, what can you say? I mean, Linda Carter. I mean, you gotta love it, right? You guys ready? I'm gonna take you to my boudoir. Let's go. Here we are. So in here, I really feel like I've really made it to a serious, beautiful townhouse. This, when I'm in here, this paint is called Gypsy. Gypsy pink, and I am a gypsy. And I love this room. When I close it, and I'll show you what it looks like when I close all the doors in here. I know I have a lot of clothes. We can talk about it later. I got it organized as much as possible, but I love this room. I have all my stuff in here. I'm gonna take you over here later, but I got, this is it. I'm a hat person. I was almost gonna wear a hat today, but I didn't. I wear hats. I just love this room. Follow me, you stay right there. I'm gonna show you what happens when I close this. Sometimes I just come in here and have my candles and just hang out. My kids will come and hang out with me. I have my little bench. Ah. Oh. And behind here, I'm not gonna open up because it's kind of messy. I have my sweaters and my shoes. But look at this. This is Benison fabric. Ah. Oh. Again, with trim. Look at this. Can you stand it? So this is my... Ah. Oh. Again, we paired it with something more contemporary. And then we come over here. This is an antique I got in New Orleans. I think I'm really obsessed with New Orleans now that I'm thinking about it. Again, you know, more traditional because I want something feminine. I, you know, I'm a kind of person that I like something feminine, but then, you know, I love Western. So I kind of go back and forth. And then here we go, all my stuff. That's really what it is. Like, I love a little chaos. Like, I'm chaotic but I can keep it together. Like I'm always flying somewhere with a backpack, but somehow I know where everything is. 
And that's what this is. Like, this is mad chaos. Like, you know, I want pictures on my mirror. I don't want it to be perfect. Everything should be a little chaotic to keep you sane. Because everybody who's too like this, that's not. It's, there's something going on if it's too perfect. So for me, this is just a little not perfect, a little great. And I know where everything is. And again, I have my fetish with my slippers. I need slippers. I like knowing where I come from. I like looking up. I like my family. My family is the key to me. You know, my parents, my kids, my, you know, my nieces, my nephews, my best friends. So this is my anchor. And I like it. You know, I see my friends as I went fishing. You know, I went hiking with the Himalayas. And to me, it's my, it's what I do. So now I'm going to take you to my bedroom. But we have to go through a really cool hall. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. All right, so we're going through the hall. I love these pictures. These are my kids. I think these are really funny because they both had hair that stuck up. And so these are, this is my scarf and my husband's scarf. This is my daughter and my son, which I think are very funny. They'd kill me if you knew this. This is Scarlett O'Hara, the queen. And this is my bathroom. Um, his and her sink. These are from um, Waterworks. Again, I just love the contemporary with the old school. Again, my husband put it up here. He thought that was very funny. This chandelier is from India. I love India. It's my favorite place in the whole world. These are from my great-grandmother. This isn't, this I got in India, but I like, again, putting the contemporary wallpaper with my old, as my kids call it, my old curmudgeon stuff, but I like it. Here's more. I just think it's cool. Actually, I got this in Austria, but that's my grandmother's, the Wedgwood, and I just think it's beautiful. Again, it's detail. Again, I told you the house is skinny, so we didn't have a lot to work with. But we were, you know, you have to be mindful how you do things. So now we're going to go into the shower. Let's go. So you come in the shower. Here's a shower. And then what you could do is you close it, and then you close that, and you take a shower. So it's really great. See? So you're nice and warm. See? Nice. And then here's the bathtub. Um, I gotta say, we don't really have to take a bath that much. The dog takes a bath a lot. Um, the kids used to take a bath. We put this up because, of course, I collect perfume bottles. A lot of them are my grandmother's, which are cool. I hung that. I think that's really funny. Um, and again, then this would take me back to my dressing room. Welcome to my room. I see somebody is already in my bed. <laughs> Finnegan, how'd you get in here? He's always very tired. All right, so this is my room. I call this the cloud room. I wanted to make this room quiet. Not uh, you, to you, it seems like a lot of stuff in here, but there's not a lot of stuff in here for me. But I wanted things in here that made me happy. It is very feminine. Um, this piece I really love. This fabric um, is Nancy Corzine. This trim is from India. And I designed this headboard because I wanted something kind of regal but beautiful. Um, this is from Julia B, this bedding, which I love, and it's our initials. It feels very pretty. And then these curtains, I just wanted very simple and white because I had these window boxes installed. So when I look out, I just see beautiful greenery, which really is great. So nobody can look in and nobody can see me, and I look out and see greenery. So when I'm in bed, it just feels very zen. And again, I didn't want to make it too matchy. Um, I got this beautiful rug in Tennessee. Um, this actually is from Shabby Chic, which I got probably 30 years ago. And this is a John Roselli fabric. And then this piece I love. This is an old kneeling bench from a church that I got, <laughs> which is really cool. And this is a gorgeous fabric that actually somebody gave me. And I don't know where it's from, but it's just this beautiful silk. And I just love this. And this has come to all my homes and I never know where it's going to go. So it ended up here and I just love it. And it's gone in all my homes in different places and it just makes me happy. Um, and again, here we go. This is just another piece I've had since I moved to New York. I found this in a street <laughs> and it's just come everywhere with me. And these are all my things that I've collected all everywhere. I mean, this I got in Turkey. This I got um, 
in, I think I got those in Sweden. And these I've just collected. Oh, and here's my wallpaper I'm putting in it. I have been looking forever for the perfect wallpaper. That's why this isn't done. This is gonna be a mirror TV, which is gonna be really beautiful. So I was waiting. Um, again, all my collections. How cool is this? I got this in Joshua Tree. How cool is that? And I got this when I was- It's a cactus. I know, how cute is that? And I got this like with a great memory. I got it with my daughter and my best friends, Nicole and Graylin, when we were traveling for her 18th birthday. Um, so again, another memory. Look at this wallpaper, just stop it right now. How gorgeous is this? This is Scalamandri, look at this. How beautiful is that? So I'm gonna put it along this whole wall, which I think will be beautiful with this beautiful mirror TV. So I'm really excited about that. I've been kind of waiting to find the perfect thing. And of course, like, it just came to me and it just my colors, like it wasn't matchy, it just came. So here we are, this dresser. Oh, I got this when I worked at Ralph Lauren. And this again has been traveling with me for all my million places I've moved. And again, here's like, I look at this and I see my past and my future. And this is all the pictures of my kids and my husband. And I just love this. And again, these are like things, this is from my grandmother. These are from things I found at the flea market. Um, and just all these really cool things that I can look at and make me happy. And again, this is a, antique quilt that I got in India. These I got in China. These I got in England, boy. So now we're in this little section. There's a lot to talk about. We could be here for like hours, you guys. So first of all, I brought these back from Nepal. <laughs> we wrapped them up in a sheet from the hotel and brought them back with my best friend, Kim, from DC. These have been with me for like 30 years or something like that. So these I brought back. Look at this, my signed autograph from Vincent Price. I mean. Call me weird, but when I was a kid, I loved scary movies. What 11-year-old asked for Vincent Price autograph? Moi, just saying, okay. Um, my quilts, and I have a lot more, but I collect quilts. For a while there, when I was a little younger, I wanted to open a pillow store in California on Montana and just have tons of quilts and fabrics and have people come in and pick it with trims because again, I'm obsessed with pillows and trims and come in and make pillows. And I'm still not totally done with that idea, so don't take it. And then this piece, I actually got this piece at ABC, believe it or not. And this in my other house, we had up against a wall overlooking Central Park and we called it the throne because whoever got to sit in it was the throne. So we'd be like, I got the throne. But now I like this piece because I sit and read. Another piece from Nicole Gogolak that I love. And I sit in here and I read and I chill and it's just so great. I love it. And then over here, this is my side of the bed, as you could tell, all my memories. Again, this is really I, all the stuff I love. You know, this is when we were in Africa. This I got in um, Austria. This I got, oh, I got this in um, Denver. I love this piece. Um, and this is just all of our little travels, you know, India. I got this in Greece. Now we are going into the Malibu room. So we'll take you down. There's some really cool art here that we got in Italy. It used to be above my fireplace in my old house. This is kind of a joke piece of art my friend Kim got. It's supposed to be Ken and Barbie, my husband and I, Dan and Hillary, ha ha. As you can see, we're celebrating the holidays, a little festive tree. And these are all these little um, ornaments that we've collected over the years that my kids have collected. So it's a fun tree, not stiff, it's fun. Like we love LaCroix, we've been to Paris, we like gumballs, okay. Um, so this is a Malibu room. We call it because we're kind of bi-coastal and we like the beach. So um, that's why it's called the Malibu room. And it feels a little bit different than the rest of the house. It has more of a California vibe. I guess. So that's why it's called the Malibu Room. Um, this sofa, we love. It is so comfy. Um, this is from Shabby Chic and is so comfortable. I love Shabby Chic's sofas. Um, it's super deep. And these are John Roselli. Everything is custom made. Um, the pillows, because I like everything a certain way. You know, I like to change it up. Um, we always have big fur, fake, don't worry, throws here. Um, this is John Roselli. Oh, this is from Ralph Lauren. I got it from my friend Regina. Um, 
as a Christmas present. Isn't that cool? Like I said, I don't like to put things away and hide things. My kids are artists. My daughter made this in high school and it's a dress made out of rubber gloves. How cool is that? So I, instead of like just shoving it away, I thought let's display it because to me, this is art. So this is, she, she made this. So I put it out. I love it. Um, this is just, you know, this, these are Bunny Williams. Um, and then here, these I found at a flea market, which I thought was really cool. And this has been coming with me in all my homes. Uh, I designed this um, built in because I like to collect these blue and white bases. Um, these are from everywhere. I love these. Some are antiques, some we've gotten in Amsterdam. I also wanted to be able to put photos of the family. And again, like I said, I like to display the art. This is my daughter's piece of art. <laughs> it's very cool. And then the best part about this, because we want a cool mood, I designed a really cool backyard. Let's go, it's a little rainy, so put your little raincoat hat on, let's go. So listen how quiet it is. Listen, how zen, how cool is this? So, I got this fountain from France. It came all the way from France. They had to bring piece by piece out. I didn't realize what an ordeal it was, but of course it was an ordeal. Um, we can eat out here. And then right now, we usually have fish in the fountain, It was just really cool. And it's cute because a little dog comes up. And then there's, there's a little path. And at night, you gotta see this at night, the whole thing lights up. It's so cool. And then I put this swing in, and then there's a little fairy path. And then we have the swing that you can sit in, which is really cool. And it's really nice. Like, listen, how quiet. And then we put this bamboo in on their side and our side and over there. So we created this really quiet moment. Listen. So it's kind of a cross between kind of an Asian feeling, kind of a, you're not really sure where you are. And that was what we wanted to create. So I really, I come back here a lot and just kind of fizzle around and sit back there and hang out. And the great part about it is it's almost like, since our house is glass in the back, if you see, it's kind of, it, it kind of brings back the back of our house because of the glass. It kind of is, um, reflects the back of our house to the front. So. When you're looking, when you're down, it's almost like this is part of the house, which is really important because you never come down the stairs without looking. So it really makes the house feel that much bigger. And it's such an important part of the house, especially at night when this thing is lit up. It's, it's really magical. Welcome to the powder room. A powder room is a really important place in someone's house. People don't think it is, but it really is because everyone in your house is going there. So this is important because this plays for two things. This is the powder room, but it's also the guest bathroom. So it's a little small to get into, but what we put in here is I love, I designed this sink because I wanted something really sexy and romantic and functional. So I designed this because I like how, um, I like the shape of it and look at these, please come here. Look at this. How gorgeous is this? Look at the detail. I saw this and I went crazy and I had to have this. Look at this. So, I love this piece and I just love the footstool there in case someone little comes and I just thought, how cute is that? So everything in here, the, oh, I brought these back from Venice, Italy. How gorgeous are those? So everything in here obviously are pieces of art that we traveled with and then you'll come back in and then you're like, oh, what great mirrors. These are like antique mirrors. I designed this to look old school and old world. And you're like, wait a minute, what's behind there? Well, let's look. Oh. Wait a minute. It's a shower. Wow. Let's go in. So I designed a shower in here for my guests who sleep over. And what I did is I made it gold. So it's like old school when they're taking a shower because I wanted to continue the details. Like I said, details are super important. So for my guests to have a shower. So 
that's what I designed in here because I didn't want people when they were in the powder room to have to look at that, right? Because who wants to be going to the bathroom looking at that? Not me, not you. So we did that instead. So when they're going to the bathroom, you can come in, you'll close the door. They're looking at all this cool art that we traveled with. Of course, I put something my daughter made. And of course, we had to get a picture of Finn. And you thought I was organized? This is where it all happens. And you know what? I have another storage area. <laughs> well, this is Fido. And Fido is going pee pee. But he's not going out till spring because there's too much going on outside, which you'll see. But I put a collar on him. And I thought it was hysterical. I saw this when I was traveling. And I, of course, had to get one. So I looked high and low and I found it. So he's gonna go out in spring. Look, he's peeing. And I thought that was hysterical because I like to put things on the outside of my house to make people laugh because I find that really important. So right now you'll go outside and you'll see we're doing holiday. So I put tons of light. Like you can probably see my house from the moon. Um, and so I'll put him out in spring to make him laugh because I, just, I thought that was hysterical. This is not all my stuff. I have another storage area. This is just stuff in process. Um, yeah, this used to be have nothing in here. This is where my kids used to have parties. But right now, the party is here with this stuff. I could do someone's house that's either traditional or contemporary, but it's gotta be what's comfortable for them. It's their lifestyle, not my lifestyle. And for me, what happens a lot is what I see a lot of designers wanna do their style. But it's, for me, it's my client's style. I don't want to put that on them. So this might not be for everybody, but this is my family. And when they walk in, I want them to feel comfortable. And I want it to feel love and with pictures and not uncomfortable and not sterile. So that's what I love about my house. And, and I want people to feel comfortable like Finn and they can sit on the furniture and be happy and not feel that they can't touch anything. That's what I love about my house. Hi, Homeworthy, I'm Emily. Welcome to our New York City apartment. Come in. Hi, I'm Emily Opry, and we're in my two bedroom, two bath apartment in Long Island City, Queens, the first stop into Queens. We pay $3,300 a month. And this is our dog, Morgan. I feel like we hit the lottery. Um, this is an affordable housing building and the rent is based on your income. So we're not paying market rate for this apartment. Um, it's a two bedroom, two bath, like I said, with a huge um, terrace, about 700 square feet. I applied through the lottery on New York City Housing Connect. Um, and it's based on your income on how much your rent will be. And specific units are assigned specific income brackets. It definitely won the lottery. I'm so grateful. We are always opening our home to everyone because we are so grateful and we love to share. <laughs> we live here with um, my husband, Matt, and our son, who is five. His name is Maxwell. And I'll oh, get the dog. <laughs> so I'm a nurse by day and by night I'm a content creator. I've been tapping into my inner child lately and it's been showing in our home. And it's fun because, you know, I have a five-year-old now, so we can do those things together. We're in the entryway. This is when you first come into the apartment. And we have our Kwanzaa um, set up here because Kwanzaa is coming up. It's the day after Christmas. Kwanzaa is a way to celebrate African and African-American culture and pay homage to your ancestors. We started celebrating about, um, I think this is going to be our third Kwanzaa. And I'm excited to share this tradition with our son. And um, so there's seven days of Kwanzaa and for the seven principles that you focus on during the whole year, a couple of them are unity, collective work, and faith. And on the sixth day, there's a feast. And for every child that you have, there's supposed to be a corn on the cob. So I would, we'll have one. And there's um, a unity cup that's wooden and we all drink from it. Oh, this is... So I, I made a reel about this actually. It was moms everywhere buying our own holiday gifts. So this is my Kwanzaa Christmas gift to myself. Um, this is my first Farm Rio dress. I've been wanting one for like over a year. So I splurged and got it for 
<laughs> Plans of Christmas for myself. And I told my husband, thank you. <laughs> oh, so this is um, an Africa-shaped necklace. And I like to wear it so that it reminds me of my ancestors and that they're with me throughout the day. And I love gold. I, I used to hate gold. I was all about silver. Like growing up, everyone had sterling silver and now like gold is here. And I'm like, wow, I've been missing out with the gold jewelry. Okay, so when you first come in, you're gonna see that there's yellow paint. And this was an accident. Um, is that what is Bob Ross say? Happy accidents, happy mistakes? I don't know. It was supposed to be a cream white. I, I had no idea it was going to turn out yellow. We had it painted um, before we moved in and the painters sent me a picture and I was like absolutely mortified. Because <laughs> at that time I was very scared of color. Um, our last apartment was all gray and neutrals. So I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But it was a happy mistake because I embraced it. So the rest of the apartment is colorful. <laughs> we have a family photo shoot that we did in the living room and we have these here. And then I have this new addition I added in recently, this um, beautiful textured mirror by Anthropology. Um, and this is the first piece of furniture that I put together by myself with no tears involved. Um, so I feel very empowered to put more um, furniture together. <laughs> I wanted to keep the boho texture theme here. Um, I don't know, I, this is such a weird New York City hallway. I'm not exactly sure if I executed it exactly how I wanted to, but we put our shoes under here and we can put our stuff in here. So it's doing its job for now. So let's head to the living room and we can make a quick stop here at the hallway. This is a work in progress. Um, I had four of these up and I took the one that was here down. Um, since it's a work in progress, I'm not sure what I'm doing just yet. So I put up some line art that I had made. It's a quick, easy DIY, and I feel like it really elevated the space over here. My husband, for some reason, thought it was a self-portrait. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. Subconsciously. <laughs> but um, we have some dried florals. Um, I like to use these um, when there's no sunlight. I actually have some lavender in the bathroom that we were just in. And in the other bathroom, I have some more dried florals. Um, and this is an African basket. And this is just some abstract art here. Okay, so this is potato stamp art. <laughs> um, I had saw on Instagram, someone had made a potato stamp and put it on their actual wall. And so since this is a work in progress, I wanted to see what it would look like, um, like a test run. So I put it in actual frame and I'm gonna keep it here and see how I feel about it. So what does that actually mean? So a kind of potato in half and then um, carve out what you want and then dip it in paint. And then I press it on um, paper. And I guess this is an activity that a lot of kindergartners do, but I missed out on that when I was in kindergarten. So it was fun to tap into my inner child with this one. So this paper I actually found in the trash room on our floor. It was like this big roll of paper. <laughs> it's the same paper for the um, line art that I did. It's actually in my son's room and he draws on it all the time. I'll show you it when we get to his room. My friend had introduced me to Justina Blakeney and Hilton Carter and they are people that actually look like me and they enjoy plants and interior design. So they're my inspirations for the apartment. Um, it's definitely a boho feel. I want you to feel like calm and relaxed here. We can just like hop plop on the couch and hang out. Shoes on or shoes off here. <laughs> Before we check out Emily's living room, be sure to visit homeworthy.com slash shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see on this channel. Okay, so we're in our living room now. Obviously, the view is the first thing that you see when you come in. And my favorite thing about the view is actually not looking at the buildings it's seeing like the sun hit the reflection off the water because before i moved to new york city i used to fish a lot and i remember like sitting out fishing and the sun would always hit the water so it always reminds me of that and then my son's favorite thing to look at is this building here it looks like an h so he calls it the h building <laughs> and he'll draw it a lot too in his drawings and then so it's christmas time we celebrate christmas and kwanzaa um, and we're in a tiny New York City apartment, so we don't have a lot of space. So every year I get rid of my Christmas tree and then when Christmas comes around, I find someone that is giving away a Christmas tree. So this year, my neighbor, I think she's like three floors down, she gifted me her pencil tree. So adorable. It's, I think it's gold pencil. 
Um, and it's renter friendly, or not renter friendly, but small space um, friendly because it's pencil and I put some like uh, African print on it to show our personality. And I have fairy lights, but they're not really showing up too well right now. And then just family pictures and um, family ornaments. Okay, so totally boho. Um, I didn't learn about the style boho or design style boho until recently. And I just saw it and I knew it was me. Um, so a lot of textures, colorful. Um, this rug here is actually a play mat. It's called Boho Dream by House of Nomad. I didn't know um, about this brand. I was at my friend's house on a play date for like four hours until I realized that it was actually a play mat. I'm like, this is, this is not a rug. <laughs> so I immediately knew I had to have it myself. Okay, so this is our egg chair. All of our guests love to sit in this chair. It looks a little uncomfortable, but it's actually very comfortable. I've taken quite a few naps here. And this is actually my favorite place to sit and enjoy the view. It's a indoor outdoor chair. I think I typically see it outdoor, but I love that it's inside. It gives it some kind of like whim whimsy. And the dog loves it, of course. <laughs> I would like to think all of my plants are mostly low maintenance. Um, I water them about once a week and I have a check-in day, the same day as watering day. That's a good kind of plant hack. So when you're watering, you can check in with them. A lot of these plants are bright light, bright and direct light tolerant plants because the sun comes in here pretty bright <laughs> during the day. Um, <laughs> this light I found in the trash room again. <laughs> I think I was, uh, I don't know what I was doing. I found the trash room and I immediately grabbed it and started carrying it out. And this lady, I think she realized that I took it out of the trash room and I think she wanted it before me. <laughs> I was like, sorry. <laughs> Um, it's Ikea though. I think I ended up finding out it's Ikea lamp. Um, and like with most New York City apartments, there's no overhead lighting in the newer building. So this is pretty great light. So a lot of things are secondhand here. And I kind of like buying secondhand because your work is cut out for you. Because you could just buy anything that you want. Um, like it's a, you just buy whatever. But when you like go on Facebook Marketplace, you see the things are listed. And I also get inspiration from um, people's homes that are selling things like decor. I'm like, oh, they decorated like that. I see. Okay, that's a great idea. So these two pieces of artwork, um, it's by my favorite artist. Her name is Dominique Brown. She's pop contemporary. I don't really know much about art, but I knew like as soon as I saw these pieces that I love them. Um, this is a little boy riding a bike, so it reminded me of my son. And this reminds me of my son and I's relationship, loving mom and son. And then, so I have this wall decor here, and these are um, actually fans. We went to um, Harlem as a family, and there was this African shop and they were selling fans. I don't ever really use it as a fan, I use it as wall art. But occasionally I will. I think Juneteenth I took it out to use as a fan. But I love the colors. So we're at the bookshop. We have a lot of cool little things here. Um, some fun DIYs. So this was actually a record. And I put it on top of a bowl in the oven and it melted down and molded to this shape. And then I spray painted it. There's this um, secondhand store in Long Island City called Remix Market, and they have a whole shelf that's free of records. And I have one more right here. I'm going to melt this one down next. <laughs> I can't remember what that one was, but yeah, it was free. So it's upcycle. <laughs> and then this is a recent DIY. Um, this is a wax melt. I put eucalyptus and lavender pieces and I think lemon oil, essential oil. And then we have my in-laws here. And this is my mother-in-law. And every Christmas I bake her these Italian Christmas fig cookies. I'm gonna show you those in a second. What else do we have here? Family photos, books. My mother-in-law actually got me this plant. I don't name my plants typically, but I named this one after the town that they live in. They live in Finney Town, so I named her Finney. This is one of my uh, favorite plants. It's called Oxalis. And during the day, the blooms are open, and then at night, it shuts. It's pretty cool. These pillows, um, my mother-in-law knows my style pretty well, so she got me this one. Um, and then this is from Fabric Child. 
a black owned business that I found, I think on Etsy. And I actually became friends with her too. We talk a lot on Instagram. And then my mother-in-law got this fabric when she went to Africa. I can't remember where she went, but <laughs> she's had it for years. Um, and she knew that I like pillowcases like this. So she made it into a pillowcase for me. I think this was for my birthday as a gift. And this is also from hers too as well. So being a plant person, you make a lot of planty friends. And one of my plant friends gifted this to me. Um, when she gave it to me, it wasn't bloomed yet and she didn't know what it was. So now it's bloomed and everyone's telling me it's an amaryllis. And I love the color and I think it's perfect for Christmas right now. Um, I haven't watered it or anything. I think this is like a wax around the bulb on the bottom, I'm not sure. And then this book was gifted to me and it was a big inspiration for um, the apartment. It's called Wild Interiors. And it's actually my, one of my son's favorite books now too. That's why it's like a little messed up there. <laughs> and he'll go through, so there's just wild interiors, people's homes that have lots of plants. And he'll go through and he's like, oh mommy, look, there's my favorite plant. And it'll just be like a random plant. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and he'll be like, oh, we have that one. So this is Osemi Beauty. It's um, BIPOC owned. The owner is Ruben, he's very sweet. Um, it's Palo Santos and it's sustainable, sustainably harvested um, in Peru and it's been used for centuries as a healing method. And I like to use it when I meditate. One of my favorite things to do lately is listen to um, Sia's Unstoppable. I'm really big with affirmations and I light the um, incense while I'm listening to that. And sometimes I'll also listen to it like when I'm cleaning, that's kind of when I clear my head a lot too. So this is the classic New York City, smush everything into one space and call it a living room and a dining room. <laughs> so I put some uh, plants here to kind of give it a little divide. And so this is the dining area. And this blue couch is a new addition, which I'm obsessed with. This is uh, from Remix Market. And so is the table actually, this is new too. Before it was just like your standard dining table um, with chairs and it was kind of a little bit uncomfortable and we didn't really use the space that much. So now that it's comfortable, we're over here a lot more. I actually take a lot of my um, Zoom calls and make a lot of content here. because so I like this backdrop, but I really like this tree because it kind of looks like my hair sometimes when I have it out, so. <laughs> And I, I don't name plants either, but maybe I should name this one after me. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and then you had another guest on Homeworthy, Alvin Wayne. This is his um, vessel. You put candles in here or um, plants. You can use it how you please. This is one of my favorite items over here. This is uh, the jade. Alvin loves marble, so. So there's this Facebook group called Buy Nothing and people give away a lot of things for free. A lot of my items here are from there. So this is from there. I really don't even know <laughs> what it is. I like the color, it looks like terracotta. Um, and this is another DIY. I got this, I think off the Buy Nothing group as well. I spray painted, it was like white and black and I spray painted it with um, texture, stone spray paint and then a brown on top. And it came out like this. So these are Cucidati. These are an Italian fig cookie that I make my mother-in-law every year for Christmas. Um, we're not going to visit them this year for Christmas, so I'm gonna have to mail these off soon. <laughs> and my husband gets so excited when I make these. Uh, when I tell him I'm going to the grocery store to go buy the ingredients, because it's like figs, dates, stuff I usually don't have. I can just see his face light up and he gets so excited. Uh, it's powdered sugar and lemon, and then sprinkles on top. Uh, so this is the kitchen and I like that it's open concept. I can, I can see what everyone's doing in the living room and dining room. And this is my son's favorite plant. Um, it's a spider plant and it makes lots of babies. Um, you can see one right here. And we, t we pull, you pull them off and then you put them in water and they grow roots. And then he likes to give them to um, his teacher uh, and, who else? <laughs> and his, some of his friends. <laughs> We're in our bedroom now and it's quite small. So I wanted to embrace that. Um, so I put this canopy up and I feel like it just gives you like a big hug when, when you're in here. Also, we have this accent wall wallpaper. I've been wanting to try peel and stick wallpaper. So I just tried it on one wall and I love it so far. Renter friendly. 
And um, I have this mirror here just to like cut off this hard corner because the room is so small uh, and reflect light. And almost everything in here is secondhand. I'm gonna try and think of the things that are new. This is new, that's new. <laughs> Even the plants are secondhand. <laughs> I find most of our stuff um, on Facebook Marketplace, the secondhand items. Facebook Marketplace, buy nothing, and our uh, building actually has a Facebook page as well. A lot of people are giving things away for free, so I, yeah, like I said earlier, I think most of the stuff in here is secondhand. So we continued with the yellow theme in here since it was already out in the living room and dining area. And this paint, I don't really recommend doing this. Um, this is actually bought on Facebook Marketplace as well. <laughs> and I sent my husband to Astoria to pick it up for me. And he rode back on the city bike with the big gallon paint can in the basket. <laughs> um, I think you probably should see like paint in real life um, before you purchase it. But it turned out okay. My dream is to live in one of those huts that's on top of the water like in Aruba. They're not very big and I feel like they would have a canopy like this so this is me kind of like manifesting that <laughs> or living my dream life in a hut but here. So we all sleep in here, my husband, my son, me and the dog and I like to say that we play musical beds. Um, we're gonna see my son's room in a second and he has a big bed because at some point during the night one of us gets kicked out and we go to our son's bed. <laughs> Yeah, so Max always has to be in the middle and Matt is over there and I'm here and Max always has to have Morgan next to him to fall asleep. He says, where's Morgan? Where's Morgan? One of my favorite feelings is actually cuddling Morgan and Max next to me every night. It's like one of the few times during the day where it's like really quiet and I'm cuddling both of them and I really enjoy those moments. This is a hat organizer. It's got boho-ness to it. Um, this is not painted. This is a decal that we put up, me and my husband were struggling pretty hard putting this up. <laughs> and I was like, go that way, go this way, and sticking and unsticking. And then this is um, from Intentional Decor by Dawn. And all of her pieces have some type of intention to it. And this one is to, I can't remember what is it, giving, to remind you to give. So this is our reminder to give when we walk past. <laughs> We're in our son Max's room. We wanted this room to be fun and lighthearted and just like kid friendly. So we have actually another play mat that looks like a rug in here. And we have storage ottomans that hold his toys. He calls these puppets, even though they're stuffed animals. And um, hold more of his toys in here. And every day before school, he likes to pick out one of his toys to take with him to school. I don't know if it's like an emotional support toy, I'm not sure. <laughs> but he's been doing that since he's been like three. Um, and then up here, we hang his art up. We have um, like clothespins so we can take out his art for when he brings new stuff home and take old stuff down. This is a Kwanzaa Kanar he made last year. So we hung that back up since Kwanzaa's coming up. And then we host an ongoing diaper uh, drive for the neighborhood. And so I have him help us so we ca uh, keep the stuff in his room so he knows how important it is to give to others in need. We have Max's name on the wall. It's got some like texture to it, which I love. Um, and then his favorite color is rainbow. I'll ask him what his favorite color is and he says rainbow. So we have a rainbow blanket here for him. Uh, lots of bright colors. Oh, this is, I like the story behind this stuffed animal. We went to um, Coney Island at the end of the summer and I had to pay an absorbent amount of money to some beanbag toss game and we ended up winning. So this is a memory from that trip to Coney Island at the end of the summer. Oh yeah, we have this chair here. Um, I got it so we could read books in here, but we hardly ever use this chair. I wish we did more, um, but we don't more um stuffed animals inside here and then this box i believe it's a wine box if you order it i don't know i've never ordered wine before but i found this in the trash room and i thought it'd be a great um uh, place to put his shoes since his feet are small and they fit in here my son and i are both homebodies like we could just stay home all day all week 
You have to drag us out of the house pretty much. Now we're going to our second bathroom and it's black. It's so fun in here. Um, so it's dark, so I added in this salt lamp here for some extra light. Wanted lots of texture. Um, there's no actual sunlight in here, so I have faux plant. And then this is actually a real plant and I take it out every other day to give it sunlight. And um, I actually just installed this renter-friendly shower um, system. It's pretty cool. I have it come up and down and I like to um, water my plants and dog and wash the kid off with this. And it's matte black, which I love, goes with the total bathroom theme. And I was inspired to paint this room black from Whitney Boyd. Um, she's known as the afro -Hemian. She's on Instagram and she has a house that she calls her house Alice. Um, I'm thinking about naming our apartment now that I saw that, um, but it's mostly black walls. So I was inspired by her. And since this room is small, I thought I could paint it black. And if I didn't like, I could easily paint it back. So um, these are from our honeymoon, actually. We went to Hawaii, um, it's coral. I'm not sure what this is, but yeah, I wanted to have some sentimental pieces around, so I added this in here. Home is your safe space. It's where you can be yourself um, and create memories with loved ones. I know that we're gonna be living here a long time. Before living here, I had always moved at least every two years. So it's just really nice knowing that this is gonna be our home for a long time and creating memories here. Hi, Homesworthy. I'm Megan. Welcome to my Columbia, South Carolina home. Come on in. Hi, I'm Megan Pinkney Rutherford. I am the lead creator and founder behind Shades of Pink, and right now we are in my HQ. So Shades of Pink is a lifestyle brand started as a blog, but it's also become a um, digital creation studio because we work with brands, both local and national, to create imagery that they use in marketing, um, whether that's across their newsletter, their social media spaces, website, um, just all digital marketing. So I live in Columbia, South Carolina with my husband, Todd, our 15-month-old, Tegan, and my two stepsons. So the first place that I want to show you guys is the living and kitchen area. And this is by far where we spend the most time. Um, because of that, I wanted it to be very comfortable um, and easily accessible to anyone who's coming in and out of our house. And of course, we have a house full of children. So I needed it to be, um, I just wanted it to feel easy and I didn't want to feel like uptight where they couldn't touch things or climb on things or jump on things or shoot Nerf guns all over or wrestle and fall, all the things that boys do. So this couch has become a member of our family. Um, it's a restoration hardware piece, but it's so like slouchy. People like fall on it all the time. And honestly, at the end of every day, it does not ever look like this. Pillows are all over the ground. The kids are making a fort. We turn it into a bed. Um, like I said, it's really become a huge part of our family. And of course, as I mentioned, I have a 15 month old. So no matter how hard I try to keep the house clean, it never is. So this is his dedicated area. Um, it matches nothing in my house, but say la vie, it's being a parent, right? And one of my latest campaigns was with Lowe's Home Improvement. So these shelves are typically outfitted in a completely different way. Um, in fact, I usually have a Jonathan Green foot, um, painting right here that I'm obsessed with. He is local to Charleston and a dear friend of mine. And he is truly like a master when it comes to color and um, sharing like the Gullah experience from the Lowcountry. At any rate, I worked with Lowe's to outfit this, and this is the first time I've ever changed every single thing on the shelf into something holiday, and I love it. It really did add like the holiday spirit to this room. 
So one thing that you'll find in almost every single room in this house is a chappy wrap blanket. They are by far my favorite blankets because they are so soft. They're easy to throw in the wash so you can take them from the couch to outside and back on the couch in, within a couple hours. Um, I love this brand so much that I had the opportunity earlier this year to collaborate on a collection with them. So you'll find two blankets from my collection on this couch, which comes in handy this time of year because we are watching a ton of holiday movies my husband is a TV snob and has a TV in literally every room, but this one is by far his favorite because it's not actually a TV, it's a projector. Um, I think a short range projector is what he calls it. So it takes up this entire wall. So we'll crash on the couch, cuddle up with a chappy wrap, and then watch this huge screen from here. And I love having this tree in the corner because you can see it from the couch. I love the neutral colors on the tree because I feel like it matches just the whole vibe that we're doing. Um, the ornaments are from Front Gate and they're mostly like golds and browns, but you'll see a pop of navy to bring out what our typical color scheme is when it's not holiday. So Shades of Pink was founded almost a decade ago, which honestly blows my mind. Um, it started because I was crowned Miss South Carolina USA in 2013 and went on to compete at Miss USA. And it's crazy to think about that time period then because at the time Instagram was still very much like a new phenomenon. And because I competed on national television, people had the opportunity to search me and instead of just doing it on Google, they did it on Instagram so they were able to see my actual life, or at least what I was putting out there. Um, so on that night, I got my first influx of followers. And a couple of months after I gave up my crown, I realized my audience started to dwindle and it was because I really wasn't sharing content. Um, and obviously I was no longer Miss South Carolina USA. So I started to get creative about like how I could continue to engage that audience. And that's when my first blog was created. Um, and a few years later, it developed into what is now Shades of Pink. One of the updates that I wanted to make when I moved in was completely revamping the kitchen. So we painted the cabinets white and the kitchen bar black. Um, for like a vibey, moody, trendy kitchen. Um, it was all brown before and I think that by just adding these like classic colors, it completely changed the entire room. But don't let this trick you. With kids coming in and out, this kitchen never looks this clean. So I'm actually enjoying the peace and quiet and the cleanliness. But I do wanna show you one thing that means a lot to us. We found this bust while um, on safari in Africa. It's typically on our shelving, but I wanted to make sure that it was still displayed during the holidays. And it's all made out of metal wiring by hand. And it's just something that whenever I see reminds me of our travels um, and something that I think that we're gonna hold on to for a really long time. Another thing you'll notice is that there's a candle burning in almost every room. I love the mood that it creates. There's something to me about fire that really excites me. My best friend makes fun of me because I love striking a match. Um, so I try to keep candles lit, but again, with a full house, sometimes it's not the safest. Before we see more of this home, be sure to visit homeworthy.com shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel. A day in our household is complete chaos. It starts getting kids off to school, um, making breakfast, getting them out the door on time, then waking Tegan up, getting him through his morning routine, and then I go off to work, um, and I do the long commute of two minutes from my back door to our detached garage. And from there, it's just all go. I start with emails, then meetings, my team arrives, and we're shooting content, prepping to shoot content, um, Q 
communicating with brands and at all times just like moving around. I spent a lot of time in Charleston. That's where I grew up. It will always be home. It's where my entire family lives. Um, but I also do a ton of work down there. So Tegan and I are back and forth on the road at least once a week. So in a bit, I'm gonna take you guys through the backyard to the detached garage, which houses the Shades of Pink HQ. But first, I'm gonna take you upstairs to the guest room, which we call the Safari Suite. So this is our guest room, which has been named the Safari Suite, and it really may be my favorite room in the house. Um, it was inspired from our travels to South Africa back in 2017. When I came back, I outfitted this whole room based on that experience. So we have some hides that we picked up while we were in Africa. I wanted to make sure that it had this cool canopy because it reminded me of um, the mosquito net that I slept in, which was pretty wild. I have picked up some cool little knickknacks. There's this beaded figurine and these little animal figurines that I've spread around the room. But while we are on vacation, um, I try to pick up things here and there. This awesome print is from a water market in Thailand, but I felt like it really still fit the vibe of the room. Um, but one thing that I try to look for wherever we are, whether it's Charleston or South Africa, is a book of matches which is kind of old school since most establishments don't allow smoking anymore. But this is my collection from over the years. And if you look, it's just from like restaurants, hotels, um, attractions. And it's a really cool like talking point. People may find some place that they've been before and it could start a really cool conversation. So it's, um, it's kind of like a hunt every time I go out to see how many matchbooks I can bring back to this bowl. So, of course, you'll find another chappy wrap from my collection. I promise these are the best blankets in the whole wide world. And I've tried really hard to add a little holiday spirit to every room. So you'll find my attempt in this room right here. Um, I worked with JCPenney on a holiday campaign, and this was kind of what we came up with. But over on this bar, you'll also find some other figurines from our trip to Africa. There's this really cool painted zebra, and then this bottle opener, which is actually a horn. I think it is so cool. I was excited to bring this one back. My vibe for this room was really like boutique hotel. I wanted anyone who visited us to enter this space and feel like it was their own personal hotel room and um, have a five-star experience. So because my husband is a local representative, we live in his district, what happens to be in downtown Columbia. He's lived here for quite some time now, um, but I moved in in 2019 and since have been trying to like put my own spin, my own style within the home. Um, so that's why I'm, I've picked the rooms that I'm gonna be showing you all today. So this is Tegan's nursery and it is such a special place in the house for me. Um, I really, really wanted this room to feel modern and calm um, and super cozy. So I had the opportunity to work with Crate and Barrel to design this room a few months after he was born. And I'm so thankful for how it turned out. I absolutely love every piece of furniture in here. It's so comfortable and obviously so beautiful. And I think that I'll be able to actually get use out of some of these pieces once he's much older. Over here, I have put out books. Um, I think that book covers are absolutely beautiful and just like a great way to add decor to a space. But this is also a special place because my mother is actually a children's um, author and her book sits beautifully on this shelf. So it's always fun to pop in here and see her work in his room. So this is her book, Ellie Gets Even. It has the most beautiful illustrations, I think, of any children's book, but I'm kind of biased. Either way, um, my mom has her doctoral degree in psychology, so she uses that to give lessons to children through storybooks, and this helps um, a girl, a, a little girl who feels jealous because she's losing her mom's 
of time to someone else. So it's a great book for anybody who is going through that or maybe just um, wants a fun bedtime story for their kid. Over here is probably the most special piece in this room. It is a Bible from my great grandmother that was given to me from my aunt. And you can see that it has a lot of wear and tear. My family has, well, my family like really cares about their faith and it's something that's been passed along to many generations. So I'm super excited to eventually pass it down to Tegan. But when I come in, it's always nice to see it just kind of open as a reminder of like, where I come from and um, you know what, what really grounds me. As I mentioned, I really try and put a little bit of the holiday spirit in every room and my son is no different. He had a Christmas tree last year, but it was a little mini one. So this year we've given him a slightly bigger tree and I've really kind of stocked up on his ornaments this year and I'm excited because he'll get to use them every year while he lives with us. I chose these beautiful McKinsey Child's pieces um, I worked with them also on a holiday campaign, but I just think that they are so classic and so stunning and I actually can trust him around them because they are made so well. So they're not like easily broken and like super fragile, but I love reading a bedtime story to him during this time of year with like all the lights out and just the tree glistening. As I mentioned, it just is pure holiday magic. So one of my favorite design hacks in this room was the utilization of wallpaper. I showed you guys earlier what it looked like behind the crib. Um, so when I found this paper from Crate and Barrel, I knew that I wanted to utilize it in as many places as possible. It's actually by the brand Chasing Paper and they have great, great products. Um, so I got a little creative and I put it on the ceiling in his bathroom. And again, like I said, it is my favorite design element. So I would say that my style is very pink, but I live in a house with all boys. So it's very hard for me to utilize that color within our home, um, which again is why I love my HQ. My favorite part about this home would either have to be my HQ because it's above the detached garage, which allows me to work from home, but still separate home from work. Um, or the location. We are right downtown and it allows us to access Main Street very easily and also get right on the interstate so I can get to Charleston very quickly. So as an influencer, I feel like I share so much on social media that some things have to stay private. So I'm not gonna show you my bedroom, but I will not let you leave upstairs without seeing my favorite room in the house, my closet. Come with me. So here we are, my favorite room in the house, my closet. I spent over a year planning this closet. And let me tell you, it was worth it. I spend so much time in here getting dressed, checking emails, doing makeup, um, just having me time, honestly. So I wanna show you a few of my favorite pieces in my closet. The first would be this handbag. It was painted based on a Jonathan Green original painting and I just think it's so classic, so cute and it just reminds me of home. So it's something that I'm gonna cherish forever. To decorate the nooks within the closet, I wanted it to be functional but also beautiful. So I used um, different coffee table books so that when I'm just sitting in here, I can pull them easily. And I also used shoes and other accessories to decorate. So this is one of my favorite nooks, some of my favorite shoes, um, but these shoes are incredibly special. They are a pair of Louboutins, but they were signed by Christian Louboutin. And I absolutely love them, but I kind of regret buying a pair of shoes that I didn't already have because now I can never wear them. I wish that I would have gotten another pair of shoes that I already owned so that he could have signed them, but I wouldn't miss wearing them. So cool thing, but I guess I'll learn <laughs> for next time. So this is probably the most used space in my closet. On an average day, this will be covered with I don't know, everything that comes out of my bag that my team brings to me, usually you never see this surface. So I'm really relishing in this moment. Um, but this was an opportunity to really kind of express myself visually. Um, one thing that I love right here is this Charleston Sweetgrass basket. I use it for hair accessories, but again, it just really reminds me of home. And then here's our family Bible that was gifted to us when we got married. Here is my Miss South Carolina USA crown, 
Holding it feels like a lifetime ago. I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> but it was a very special time in my life and I feel like it taught me so much and really prepared me for the career that I have now. So I'm forever grateful for that experience. So there is actually a funny story with this closet. As I mentioned, it took a year for us to like design it, plan through it and see it come to life. And when it finished, it was January, 2021. And I did not know that I was pregnant. So we put in this wine fridge and literally like a few weeks later, I found out that I was expecting. So the joke is that I never used this for champagne until after my son was born. It got used for formula for the longest time and it's only really re as of recently that I've been able to stock it with champagne. <laughs> so this is the Shades of Pink headquarters. This is where I spend the majority of my day. This is where we get all of our work done it is our home base for prepping for campaigns, unboxing campaigns, team meetings, all of the above. So this rack plays a huge role in our business. It's where we put the products that we're gonna shoot, it's where we style things for future campaigns, and you can usually tell how much work we have based on what this, um, this clothing rack looks like. I'm not a designer and I don't, I don't really want to be a designer, um, but I do enjoy sewing. So I started making this holiday dress um, from scratch and it was something that I was really, really proud of, but I started two years ago and you can see the progress <laughs> that I've made. Um, but I guess that's what happens when you are a business owner and a mother, you don't always get to finish projects that you love. <laughs> So back here is where I spend most of my time. I sit back there and depending on what we're working on, one of my girls may sit here, but you see that we've tried our best to like organize everything. I am a huge proponent in sending handwritten notes. So I have a ton of um, note cards that are on this little cart. And I love playing records. So you'll find over here my record player and I have records in one of those boxes. When I think of the word home, I think of memories. I think of growing up and I think of that warm feeling inside that, um, I don't know, makes you feel not only comfortable, but safe. Hey, Homeworthy, welcome to my home. I'm George, come on in. Hello, my name is George Worrell and I work as a lifestyle expert here in Washington, DC. I've been doing this for the past 20 years and it's the love of my life. I do fashion, interior design, putting um, events together. It's been an amazing, amazing journey. So my outfit today, I chose it um, because it is the holidays and um, I felt really good in it. And I love the color and I thought it would just look spectacular on camera today. I am from uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Yes, people are from there. And I've been coming to Washington all of my life. My family uh, lived here, both sides of the family. I had an uncle who uh, had a shop here. Uh, he was a tailor and he owned a record store. And then my mom had a sister and brother who lived here. So it was just, we would always come here going south because um, my parents are from North Carolina. And I always gravitated to Washington. It was just a really fun, place to be and the museums were free. So um, being um, a history major, it just uh, was the place to be. And uh, after college, I was here. And then I moved to New York for a while. I lived in Philadelphia for a while, but uh, Washington is my base. Well, welcome to my entryway or foyer, uh, whichever you want to use. Um, this is my gallery. So this is where the majority of my artwork and the things that make me happy. You can see the color palette, um, the mainstay here of, of my table, my love for candles, um, my chairs. I, I actually sit here 
uh, sometimes um, to write or to think. Um, my dog, who is at daycare, Moses, is not here. Unfortunately, he says hello. Um, I will put his sweater on and do things here. Um, I can remember where I got each piece. I got this mask um, in uh, Easton Market um, from this guy from Africa. And there are pieces that go with you everywhere. And you can just kind of see the color palette of it all. This um, is a Indian painting. Um, I got this at Goodwood. And, you know, it's not a whole lot of history. I've looked up the artist. And um, it has something to do with the early American settlers. Um, and I think someone's in the background there hunting. So I pick things for color palette. I guess I should know a lot more, but um, if the color palette, my friend Freddie told me one time, she's like, just make sure it's authentic and from an artist. So that's what I've been doing. The color palette attracted me. So my drummer boys, oh my God, 25 years ago, or 20 years ago, there was a store called Ames and I could never find, you know, soldier boards of color. They're of color, they're brown. I think I spent $10 on these things and I've had them like 25 years. And the only thing I've replaced on them is, are the bulbs, but they're my drummer boys. <laughs> it's just a feeling and it's just worked because all of these are from different places. Like I said, Goodwood, Miss Pixies. I got a few pieces in New York. Um, I got some from uh, a street vendor in New York in the West Village. and. Um, so it's eclectic, but for some reason it all goes together. And um, I'm excited about that. I don't know if it's any, uh, anything special that I'm doing, but um, I know that I love these pieces and they make me feel good. I love candlesticks and candle holders. This candle holder I got, it's wrought iron. I got it at Miss Pixie's on 14th Street. And I'm sure it's about 60 to 70 years old. You don't do anything to it and I got candles and it, it goes with me everywhere. I've had it about five years and um, I have candles all over my apartment, but I love candles and you know, a little decor. And this piece here, I got at Goodwood and it is mahogany, but it's, you have to be very gentle with it. Um, but I love this piece. Um, it's a mainstay and it's slender enough so that you have room to walk through the entryway so you don't feel crowded. So I'm renovating a big house. It's gonna take a while, so I needed a place to stay. But I didn't want a large place. Um, I love hotel living. When I travel, I love living in a hotel space. And this reminds me of living in a hotel space. It's the right amount of space, but it's not too much. I'm not all day cleaning, um, all of these things, like different rooms and all that. It's just perfect for me, size-wise, and the location. I started with the sofa first, and I built and furnished and decorated everything around my sofa. Like when I walked into the apartment, uh, there was nothing of course, but I took about a month or two to choose the sofa. Like I don't, I kept things in storage, I didn't do anything until I purchased my sofa. And then I bought the mirrors in, and then I bought the lamps in, and all the things because I had such a large space, I wanted this space to not be over decorated. Um, I wanted to have space to kind of move around. I have s spaces in here that there's nothing on the wall, um, so that it, there's a balance. Come on, let's go into the living room slash kitchen, which I talk about the hotel living. So everything is here together, um, all of my appliances. Um, this is where I eat and dine. There's usually no more than one other person um, to sit and have a little nosh. I cook fall and winter. Spring, not so much. I may go up on the rooftop and barbecue, but it's kind of, um, I go out. 
But now, it's so funny that you should ask me that because I got my mother's recipe, finally, I'm 60, from, for banana pudding. So I've been making banana pudding um, for the holidays and that, so I do a lot of cooking. The secret for me for decorating a small space is making sure you have the balance of enough but not too much. Like, so I don't like clutter. I'm like, I'm like the Joan Crawford of cleanliness. So I wanna be able to see my things. I wanna be able to not feel, you know, blocked in. And with this space, like I said, that I started with the sofa and build around it, like there's no, I had to create spaces. So I had to create my kitchen space. So two people, that's it. Um, sofa, uh, my books, to watch TV or to read. These places are together. You just kind of have to section it off so that it works. So I have room to cook, then I can sit down and eat. Um, my parents did come when I first moved in and uh, it was very comfortable for them. I actually stayed in one of the vacant apartments, um, but there was enough room uh, for all of us. I always want a real tree. It's a real tree, like all of these ornaments I've gathered over 20 years. Like even this, these deer that I found at a secondhand store in New York. So this um, I found four years ago after my dog at the time, uh, Max, had passed. He, and I thought as a representation of him, I would find this, or, this ornament. So it comes on the tree every year um, and hangs. He's here in spirit. I love birds. So I have an assortment of birds. I found all of these things, Michael's, um, all of, a few discount places, and they're very well made. So, you know, just each year you bring them out, the boxes, there's nothing in them. Um, they're just for decor. So um, soon I guess I need to probably start Christmas shopping, huh? So I found this piece at Miss Pixie's and I loved it because I wanted a TV stand, but I also wanted something that had compartments that I could put things in. So I have all of these drawers, I have hangers in here, I have some of my winter stuff in here, I have bulbs on that side. Because of space, you know, um, but you would never know it. Like to look at it, it's just a place with TV, but it has all of these compartments that I love. and that. It's also um, a really nice wood and it was painted on the back and he left the front natural. So I loved it. It's, it's just, you know, you have these pieces that you have that will go with you forever. Like I'm a person that changes a lot. Like, so the sofa that I had in my last space was not the sofa that I wanted in this space. But there are pieces like this piece and this piece and many other pieces that will go with me where I go. So I've learned over the years of being in fashion and interior design is that I've educated myself to find wonderful pieces, lasting pieces, whether it be clothes or interior design. So um, I love that eclectic feel. I do have a color palette. It's uh, fall colors, yellows, browns, those kinds of things that you'll see throughout the apartment but um, I'm, I'm definitely a color person, but I, I like the walls to be white and the color to come from the things that I have on the wall and in the apartment. And I also wanted the feel of a library. If you notice, all over my apartment, you will see books. And I want it to wherever I am that I can pick up a book and read, but I want it comfort. Because many times you can be at a place or be in someone's home and the furniture is really lovely, but it's uncomfortable. All the furniture here is comfortable. I have books according to, to size. So I have this small Jackie book, Jacqueline Kennedy. I also have this, um, Caroline Kennedy did this, uh, Best Love Poems by uh, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. And I have Fred Astaire style. I love mirrors and um, I found this piece, I think at Goodwood and it mounts to the wall. 
And uh, I got the garland to go around, and of course, my candles. And it's, it's happenstance. Like, you find these pieces, and sometimes you don't know where they will go, but you love them, and you just make it work, and it, it just works. Like, I love this area. Um, and again, a small space, I couldn't have something large. So um, I like this area. Um, I found the garland at Target. So you'll notice that um, throughout the tour, I've named some of the same stores um, because they are places that I find pieces that I will not find any place else. And they're in my neighborhood. And when I say neighborhood, they're in Washington and the places they're my haunts. Sometimes I go there and I don't buy anything. I will sit, um, I'll read, or I'll talk to Miss Pixies, or I'll go to Goodwood and I would talk to Anna. Um, her husband would uh, tell me about the artwork. Um, so it was more like family. So these pieces meant a lot to me um, in finding them uh, and keeping them. It's wonderful every morning to wake up to the things that you love and the things that you have curated. Um, this apartment and many places that I've lived were curated. And I think hopefully the people that are your viewers, you curate your space. You put together the things that you love. And when you put the things together that you love, somehow they go together. They may not be purchased together or they just work, they mesh. I found this in the trash and it's called Dreams Come True. This is about 10 years old. It goes with me everywhere. Dreams come true. And I always have it in my kitchen and I always remind myself as a dreamer that they do come true. Now, let's take a look at my bedroom. And again, you want to make the most out of a small space. So I'm loving that the walls are white. And um, I wanted something a little, just maybe extra. And uh, so I chose this. I found this off of Wayfair. It's uh, white velvet. And uh, then I found the comforter at Wayfair too. I have... Um, a love for pattern and um, so I think it all works together. Um, I found this again at um, a secondhand store and um, it works as a dresser and a TV stand. So I have my handkerchiefs and my belts and my jewelry and socks and all that other kind of stuff. So I've been lucky enough to purchase some items that have a backstory. So these side tables, I got them, I went with a friend to Baltimore to a vintage store and I was looking for side tables that would fit in a small space. And we found these, they're, the brand is Wellette. And they were um, started in the 30s and became really popular in the 50s. And I think I got them for like $200 and I think they're worth like six or seven a piece now. Um, but the wood is so good. And um, so it's where I keep my books and I do a lot of reading. Um, so I have the road less traveled here. Um, I think it's the second edition. And then, oh, so let me tell you, this is so funny. My mother had this on her dresser for, since I was like eight and I'm 60. So I asked her for it. This is where I keep my cufflinks. Yeah. And then my ear stoppers, because Moses snores sometimes, my dog Moses. So, yeah. So that goes here. And then I have some tabletop books. I'm a fan of Jack and Jacqueline Kennedy. So it's Remembering Jack. 
And then I found this um, photograph book, Black in America. So it has a whole lot of nostalgic black photos, some of which I cut out and have framed. And then I love, when I sit here, I always have um, my Maya Angelou's Why the Caged Bird Sings is right next to um, my table. I love the feeling of home. I love that it's a small space for me and my dog Moses. But then the amenities that I can play golf here. Um, there's an amenities room that I can entertain up to 20 to 30 people. There's a library, there's a pool on the roof. If I need to grill, there are grills. And they're accessible without leaving the building. But I don't have to maintain all of those things. I have a very active life and I just wanna come in and have a meal or wash. It just works for me and I like the white walls and I, it's quiet. Um, you see some of your neighbors sometime, but um, wonderful concierge. So it's all of those amenities, but that home feeling. Looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful 2023. Healthy and, you know, just, you know, we kind of stopped dreaming a little bit um, during the pandemic. And now that it looks as though we're kind of navigating out of it, we can uh, inspire ourselves again and live again. And as the, our, the Queen said, talk to people again, be with people again. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy about the future. I'm happy talking to you. So let's go into my closet. It's, it's a lovely size, but I'm sure I could, you know, it could be a little larger, but here we go. I have clocks in here. I have some artwork in here. Um, I have some art pieces and my hats, my suits. Um, I'm very organized and I think organization is innate because my parents are the same way. When I grew up, my friends would come to my house and they were like, does anybody live here? And I was like, oh, if I ever get a place of my own, I'm just gonna have everything around wherever I want. Of course, that's not how I live. I live the way I was raised and how my parents are. So my suits are here, my bags are here, you know, my summer bags, my shoes. The essentials for any closet, either male or female, should be a dark suit, gray, blue, or black, same for women, to have a simple black dress, a navy dress, uh, or suit, pantsuit. I also think that your garment should be interchangeable. You should be able to get two to three looks out of every outfit. And if you don't, call me, I'll show you how. I very rarely shop for the things that I need. I always go out if I see something and it catches my eye, I get it. There's always an occasion to come up with it. Like, so I saw this and I thought, mm, you know, it's inauguration season, it's Christmas, it's all of these things, holidays. Why not have this? And guess what? Allison called and said she was coming by. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to wear this suit. It's uh, ink, it's slim fit, um, and it just works for me. It's easy to wear. You don't need a whole lot of anything with it, like tie or, you know, like a button ear or any of those things. So it just works for me. I have a favorite piece in my closet. It's this suit. This suit belonged to my Uncle Clarence, my father's brother, who was a tailor and a cobbler. And he purchased this suit from Garfinkel's in 1966. Levan and this suit is timeless and I've had it um, altered I added three buttons when it was in style but I think I'm going to have it re-altered and have it a two button again but this will go with me everywhere he gave it to my father and then my father gave it to me after he passed so this is very special to me yeah and I'm also a slight bit of uh, a Carrie Bradshaw with my shoes. Each year I purge my closet and I donate and I give to people um, that are in my same size and kind of have the same taste that I do. 
Um, I don't hold on to a lot of pieces. I keep some signature pieces, like I said about um, the suit, but I'm always like getting rid of and, you know, an excuse to go purchase something else. <laughs> so as a kid, my parents took me to the boardwalk and there was an artist on there that was doing chalk um, drawings of people. And my parents had him to make a drawing of me similar to this when and i lost it like 20 years ago when i saw this this so reminded me of the kid that i was then and i that's why i got it the color palette but it just reminded me of being a kid and that artist on the boardwalk so many years ago who drew me when i come home whatever has happened that day bad, good, indifferent, that I can leave it outside and just regroup, rethink, and dream. I'm a dreamer. So, you know, working for yourself, I've been working for myself for the past 20 years. I have to have an environment that inspires me. My artwork, my clothes, the meals, all of these things in my home inspire me to go out with different ideas to do things and to navigate my journey. So that's what home means to me. Homeworthy, thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and sing a song. Good night. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.